Live from Houston, Texas at BBVA Compass Stadium, this is Tiger Football. Good evening and welcome to BBVA Compass Stadium, home of Texas Southern University. And of course tonight, the Tigers will be taking on Texas College, looking to improve to 2-0 early in the season. Hello, I'm Butch Alcindor and joining me here in the booth, Lemont Williams. Down on the sideline, we have Mr. Nick Strong. He will bring us a lot of updates. But first, let's talk about the Tigers because last week they got a huge yeah. win over Prairie View, so they should be coming into this game with a lot of confidence. A lot of confidence, no doubt about that. They played physical up front. They were outstanding throughout the game against Prairie View. Creating turnovers was the key for the Texas Southern set secondary and producing points as well. Came up with a big interception there. And then check this out. Brandon Thomas scoops up the fumble, takes it all the way back to the house. That defense was huge for TSU against Prairie View. Their defense has to step up again tonight against a smaller team in Texas College, but their defense was outstanding as well. They also got a great game from the kicker, Eric Medina. Hit a couple of field goals, and guess who got to lift the trophy? The <laughs> TSU Tigers. Of course, tonight they're going to take on Texas College. That's a different animal altogether <laughs> because you're going to see a lot of different people on the field for TSU yeah. tonight. But what do they have to do to get on, jump on this team early? Continue that momentum that they build against Prairie View. A lot, of, a lot of young players will be playing tonight, so they got to build off that confidence, and hopefully they can get the victory. And, of course, the Steers come into Houston tonight with a local connection. <laughs> Their coach, Rodney Blackshear, went to Texas Tech, yeah. also played high school ball here at Reagan High School, and I remember covering him when he was on the arena team. So that's kind of a, a cool angle for tonight. But let's talk about the players we need to spotlight tonight. And one guy we thought we would be seeing a lot of who had a huge game last week is Homer Causey, but he won't be playing tonight. Not at all. Homer Causey was their true leader last week against Prairie View. Unfortunately, he got injured throughout the game. You can see he's a guy that likes to throw the ball, but he likes to run. An elusive player that can get away from defenders and produce some points and move the chain. They're going to have to do something to replace his output because he was tremendous. 14 to 22 for 224 yards and a touchdown pass, and then he had that touchdown run. So a big game for Homer Causey, but the big key will be his replacement tonight. Jamal Small will be making his first <laughs> collegiate start. Yeah, his name is Small, but he has to play huge tonight. He has to play big. First career start for the Texas Southern Tigers. He helped them in the second half to get that victory. As Some well. other quick injuries. Amir Bloom, yeah. out. Out. Uh, sack leader for the Texas Southern Tigers. They're going to miss him up front. Latevin Wilcox also not playing tonight. Yeah, the secondary play big against Prairie View. They're going to miss him, but watch Trey Walker. So the key is to keep your program close. We will be <laughs> right back with kickoff between Texas Southern and Texas College. When we send an IBW electrician to your job site, I expect my electrical worker to be neat. Uh, I expect him to be professional. I expect him to be on time. Uh, I expect him to be productive. I expect him to do everything in his power or her power to ensure that employer is successful. Uh, because what's going to get us more work is, is successful jobs. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. she pack these things? I ate one by accident last time, and we won. It's good luck. But it tastes like a dirty old tree branch. What the heck is Quino? But this is for first place. What is that, a loofah? It's a Quino. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. 
Welcome back to BBVA, BBVA Compass Stadium tonight. You know, they also call this place the oven, and we're finding <laughs> out why, because it is extremely hot tonight as we get set for kickoff between the Texas Southern Tigers and Texas College. It is hot and humid here in BBVA Compass Stadium, downtown Houston, Texas, but it looks like the Texas Southern Tigers defense is going to be on the field first going into this first quarter. And that may be a good sign, Lamont, because the Tigers' defense had an outstanding year last year. Despite the 2-9 and nine record, the defense actually played pretty well. They were close in most of those nine losses. So tonight, I'm sure that's what they want to do, come out, kick the ball off, make them go three and out, and get the ball right back. And again, without their key player, Amir Bloom, not leading them up front, the sack leader for the Texas Southern Tigers. Let's look for some guys early to get going here, uh, Butch. Look for some guys from an outside edge as well as their secondary. Trey Walk, I mentioned, all swag player. He's going to lock down the receivers on the outside. Eric Medina will handle the kickoff, and we are underway at BBVA Compass Stadium. He kicks it deep into the end zone right there, and the Steers are going to down it down. They will start first and 10 at the 25. And, of course, we know that they run the spread offense, so the Tigers are already aware to expect a lot of passing going on uh, early in this ball game. Yeah, they want to pass the ball. Look for Cortez Griffin, their starting quarterback. He's a humble, disciplined player, but he's a guy that can beat you as well with his feet. And, of course, let's go over some of the defensive game starters. As I mentioned before, they have several new players on defense tonight because of injuries and some guys that just wanted to rest. The key is Zacchaeus Bamijoko in the middle. He's starting for Claiborne. We're going to keep our eye on him. First and 10 now from the 25 for the Steers. The pass right there from Griffin is popped up in the air, and it is incomplete. So that's no surprise there. We knew they would come out and start by putting the ball in the air. Not, not surprised at all, but you want to kind of set the tone uh, on the road. Look for Griffin to kind of go with the short, quick, intermediate passes against his Texas, Texas Southern defense. Coming out now is going to be second and ten, and you expect the Tigers to maybe have a physical advantage in this one. The handoff right there goes to number four. That's Edward Burns, and he is stacked up quickly right there. Not much inside as he tried the right side. Hughes down right here for Texas Southern. Can you get him off the field on third down? They had some issues early in the first half against Prairie View, getting them off the field on third down, but they stepped up in the second half, which eventually led to the victory. Looks like it's third and seven for Texas College as they come out in the shotgun. Griffin is the quarterback, and, of course, he had some success last week even though they did not win the ball game. Let's go. It's going to be third and seven. Griffin back to pass, and his ball is picked off. A big play right there by its number 25, and that's Dondre Dobbins. Dobbins is actually starting tonight for Wilcox. So here he is. He comes off the bench, <laughs> and on the third play of the game, he comes up with a huge play. Excellent job there by Dobbins. You want to see. He got a great jump. You just see the jump right here by Dobbins on the receiver. He kind of just read that all the way there, read the eyes of Griffin. Outstanding job by some of the young guys going setting the tone. I talk about turnovers. They got one here early in the first quarter. And you talk about a young man that might be just a little nervous right now because coming out, this is his first start, is Jamal Small, number 15 at quarterback, taking the snap out of the gun. Small back to pass. Looking deep right away. Has a man. Great diving catch right there. He did not get in the end zone. It looks like he's down at about the two-yard line. It's number 85, Larry Clark. Yeah, Larry Clark just runs past the second. And you see Smalls go deep early and often. Texas Southern want to put some points up, kind of reward the defense for getting that turnover. Excellent job there. Good pitch and catch from the wide receiver, I mean, from the quarterback to the wide receiver. Not too bad for your first pass and your no. first start, and you hook up with that kind of completion. Tigers go to the I formation now. Let's see if they can bang this one in. It's first and goal right there at the, looks like it's the one-and-a-half-yard line for Texas Southern. Small turns and hands it, and that's going to be a touchdown, an easy touchdown right there to number seven. Davion Porter taking it in almost untouched. So this has been a perfect scenario for the Tigers. Hold them to get the turnover, and then you come in and you punch it in for seven points. Yeah, Davion Porter is a guy that they're going to depend on a lot this season in the SWAC conference. Want to continue to build his confidence from out the last week. Nice job for him to get in and get that first touchdown, setting the tone for the Tigers. Let's talk about the offensive line, though, because there was nobody in sight with a white jersey. They just cleaned out everybody on that side, 
and Porter just took it on in. Great shot. Medina adds the extra point. And the TSU Tigers on top early over Texas College. The score is 7-0. We are early in the first quarter. Training is about more than muscle. It's about inner strength. So I push myself. That's why I serve in the United States Coast Guard. I train with the best. A team that shares my drive and commitment. We collect intelligence, guard our shores against drug smugglers, and keep our waterways safe. Because our nation expects more. If you expect more, maybe you were born ready. Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. I hate watching with Ramsey. All he does is yell. They can't hear you, Ramsey. But every time he's come over this year, we've won. And he always brings Bud Light. Little dog won't come out from under the couch, but we're winning. I love you, Ramsey. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. It couldn't have started, have started off better. And now what we need to see now is we need to see the Tigers keep it up and continue to make it. There you saw Porter running in for the touchdown. Eric Medina getting set to kick it off. And uh, let's see if the Tigers can do the same thing again on defense. They're starting four new starters tonight for a variety of reasons. Some people are playing for injuries. Some people are just playing to, just to see some action. And it's an opportunity for a lot of young players to get some reps. That's all it's about. I mean, you want, as Coach Asbury, you want to get a lot of the young players the opportunity to play. It's nothing like gang reps. And right now, a lot of the young players defensively are getting some reps. And here is Medina with the kick. And he sends it out of the end zone. So once again, the steers will start from the 25 on offense. Last time they tried to establish the passing game, Butch, early on with the passing, but then they got in trouble on the third in the, on third down. Kind of telegraphing the pass there, secondary is kind of playing off on it. We said that a lot of young players are trying to get rest with Texas Southern. Let's see how they attack them this time in the second series. I had a chance to talk to the offense and defensive coordinators before the game, and one of the keys they thought would be for their offensive line, could they keep the Tigers off of their quarterback? And after the first series, the answer is no. First and 10, Griffin back to pass again. Pulls it down, drops the ball, and it is loose. I think a member of the Steers got on the football. It looked like number four. Edward Burns is there for the re recovery, but the Tigers came that close to having two straight turnovers in this game. And as you can see in the replay, Griffin tried to take off, and as he was taking off, he dropped the ball, almost giving uh, the Texas Southern Tigers their second turnover here in the first quarter. Hey, let's not dismiss the heat on this because that could be a factor. As he came out of the huddle, the ball just scooted out of his hands, and it is hot down there on the field, folks. It is extremely hot. They actually gained yards on that play even though it was a fumble. So we have second and about seven, handoff inside. He breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, and is finally pulled down at about the 45-yard line. That is Edward Burns, the young man who recovered the fumble. Now he comes up with a big run. Good job there by Burns. Understanding the blitz package coming on the strong side from the Texas Southern Tigers, Burns was able to fight through a tackle and get some positive yards for first down. You see the blitz coming from the right side by the defenders, but Burns smart enough and strong enough to break through the defenders to get the first down. 
He's their leading rusher, and, and they said he's not a burner, but he's pretty shifty, and we saw just a little bit of that right there as he took the handoff. So it's going to be first and 10 for Texas College. As I said, they're starting from about the 45-yard line. The ball is given again to Ooh. Edward Burns, and this time he goes nowhere. He is slammed down in a hurry right there by the Tigers. Jarvis Moore, linebacker out of Houston, Texas, North Shore alum. You see him come down from the left side and laid a boom right there on Burns, stopping him in his tracks for a, for a loss of game. And that's going to be key because the Tigers are going to have to do a lot of that. Of course, last year we mentioned they were 2-9, and nine, but that defense played pretty well for most of the season. Second down and about 11 to go for the Steers. Back to pass is Griffin under pressure, tries to run it out, and he is taken down, and that is going to be a sack because it looked like he did not make it back to the line of scrimmage. It looked like he came up just a little bit short. So they're going to have a big third down coming up right here. Well, here we go. Last time they was in the big third down, they forced a turnover. Texas Southern did and was able to get the interception. Let's see what they do here on this third down. The good thing about this so far, Tigers have put a lot of pressure on the quarterback, and this is just their second possession of the ball game. So we start now third and 11. The ball is right, just, just right on the 45-yard line as Griffin calls out the signals. He's back in the gun to pass. Trips to the left. He shoots a pass. The oh. guy was wide open, and he missed him. He threw the ball behind his intended receiver at that point, who was number 80, Greg Owens. Excellent job there by the Texas Southern Tigers defense. Coming from the right side, bringing the pressure right in front of Griffin's face. He kind of was rushing his throw. Didn't give the chance for his receiver to come out to break. Another three and out. Tigers are looking good at this point, and they're getting set to get the ball back again. And or are they actually going for it on fourth let's down? Let's see. They're going to go for it on fourth down, and TSU wants a timeout because they had their punt unit on <laughs> out there. So <laughs> you got to get those guys off the field and, and get ready for this fourth down attempt. Are you, are you surprised by how well the TSU defense is playing with, with so many backup players in the mix for this game? No, I'm not surprised. I mean, you have to understand Texas Southern as a program went through some changes the last two seasons, and as right now, you can see a lot of the guys are earning their keep. They are earning their keep, and of course, this the TSU uniforms tonight sponsored by Russell Athletic, the team uniform. You can see those maroon jerseys right there. Looking sharp for their first home opener tonight. <laughs> now, they actually played over you know, they played in Houston mm -hmm. last week, but Prairie View was the home team. So tonight is the home opener for the TSU Tigers. Excellent way to kind of get it off to a good start. Thursday night football, a lot of football starting this week, Butch, and right now Texas Southern is controlling this game. You know, we said on the top, Amir Bloom was out. He has an ankle injury. He had 10 sacks last year, and so far that defensive line has not missed a beat without him uh, to this point. We come out now. It's going to be fourth and about 11 for the Steers as they come back to play here at BBVA. And let's see, this is a key play. We're early in the ball game, but this is a oh. huge play. Tigers jumped, actually. That did not work out at all. They tried to pooch punt right there and it hit a Tiger player. Let's see where it goes. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff going on here. First of all, TSU was off sides on the play. Then the Steers tried to do the pooch punt, yeah. which went straight up in the air. It did not work, but it actually hit a TSU Tiger player and I'm not sure who recovered it, but it looked like it could have been Texas College on the recovery. Let's take a look. As you see Griffin here with the pooch kick high. You got to call Peter, Peter, Peter to get away from the ball. As you see the Texas Southern Tiger player didn't know, couldn't locate the ball as it hit him on the back leg, giving Texas College new life in the first down. It is. They, they, they were go Number 50, defense. The penalty is declined. The ball was touched by the receiving team, recovered by the kicking team. First down, Texas College. That's not a usual way to get a first down, but it'll work. <laughs> Texas take College, anything. With, yeah, with the ball, first and 10, they are on the move with that first down, their first of the ball game. Back to pass again, and this time Ooh. he is nailed again. That's Griffin scrambling out of the pocket before he is taken down after a very short game for Texas College. Another big hit there by Jarvis Moore. You see Griffin's trying to find, surveying the defense, decided to run at the last second. Boom! And gets hit right there by Jarvis Moore, young man out of North Shore High School out of Houston, Texas. 
Well, you can tell right now we're going to see a lot of different things going on in this one because uh, we've already seen them try that little that little sneak punt, <laughs> and that <laughs> it worked out, but not quite the way they wanted it to work out. So a big play. Now we come up. We got second and about seven for Texas College. They go to the I formation. The handoff goes to Burns. He bangs it up the middle before he is taken down after another short game. Believe it or not, but you're starting to see some momentum here by Texas College. I mean, they had an opportunity to get a, a muff punt after it touched the Texas Southern Tigers uh, player, but you're starting to see some momentum here. And if you're the head coach for Texas College, you got to be excited offensively. They're starting to get the ball across the 50-yard line, and you're starting to implement the running game as well. They have another key third down coming up again, and this time Griffin goes back to the I formation, and they've been having success punching it in there. Let's take a look and see. What happens here? Third and short for the Steers. Back to pass, handoff goes to Burns. He tries to get sweep right, and he has no place to go. A host of Tigers are there, led by number six. That's the key is Bammy Joko. <laughs> Bammy Joko. He, yes, he is starting for Claiborne in the middle, and what a play. Look at the job right there by Quentin. Number 45, Quentin Salisbury, he was able to stretch the play out as a defensive end, not giving up contain, which forced Burns to cut back in and to his defenders. That's a big start for the Tigers, and we're taking a look at the Steers, and they come back out. I think they're going to go for it again on fourth down. At least they're giving the indication that they might go for it. Well, last time it worked for him with the pooch kick. He tries it again this time, and it's going to be... Oh. They're going to down it inside the five. It looks like the ball's going to be down right there at about the three-yard line. So the Tigers will have a lot of field to work with. What do you tell a young quarterback in this situation? You're coming out, you got the ball, and now we have a timeout on the field, an official timeout. Uh, what do you tell a young quarterback in that situation? You got the ball deep in your own territory. I'm Percy Cruzo. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchies. <coughs> our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. The environment is my passion. Every day I live for the outdoors and all of its challenges. That's why I enlisted in the Coast Guard. Now, I serve to protect the environment and defend my country. It's like I was born for this. Were you born ready for a greater challenge? Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. Welcome back to BBVA Compass Stadium where it's very, very hot down on the field and so are the TSU Tigers as they have gotten off to a quick 7-0 lead with 8.36 to go in the first quarter. The defense set the tone, producing turnovers, was able to get the offense the ball real quick. Porter was able to get in for a touchdown in the, in the red zone. Texas Southern now in their second series. Let's see what Smalls does as a quarterback from the quarterback position, Butch. Let's see if he settles down, offensive, get the offense to settle down and move the ball down the field. It's look, it looks like the officials have moved it closer to the five-yard line where they will start first and ten. And the handoff goes to Davion Porter, and he spun around, picks up a short gain right there over the left side. So the Tigers actually think they can run the ball tonight against this team. They, they do have a size advantage. Oh, no, uh, no question about that up front. Their offensive line are massive, and they like to move and make, and make big holes. Texas College is a team, as you can see, their bench is not real big with depth. So you want to kind of rush right at them early on and kind of wear them down so your running game 
can establish itself in the first half. Second down and about seven to go for the Tigers as they work out of the gun. Small making his first collegiate start here tonight, and so far it's been off to a good start. From his end zone, Smalls fires a strike, and it's almost picked off. It should have been picked off right there by number eight, and he is Michael Lazard. He had his hands on it, and he could have walked in for the touchdown. And I can see Lazard just sits back in the zone, reads the eyes of Smalls. Almost had a chance to get a gift early in this first quarter. That could have been huge for Texas College. Well, that's the kind of mistake you don't want a young quarterback to make. He telegraphed the pass right in there, and Lazard was right there. Fortunately for the Tigers, he could not hang on. So now we have a big third down coming up here for TSU. Small trying to coordinate things in the backfield, working out of the gun. Back to pass, drops off the short pass. It's Davion Porter, and he could not get away. He is corralled and dropped right about the 10-yard line. But there is a flag down. Looks like it might be against Texas Southern. Holding number 72, offense. The penalty is declined, fourth down. And Bush, that's some things that Texas Southern struggled with last week against Prairie View with the penalties, especially with the offensive line. You can't kill your momentum. You can't beat yourself with those type of plays. Yeah, you're right. They had 17 penalties for like 166 yards, and uh, you, you know that is that make it, that's making it very, very tough on your team when you put your offense or your defense in a hole each time. So Tigers are going to be punting from deep, punting from deep in their own territory. Back to return the punt is number one. That is oh, Phillip. Block. Punt is blocked, and we've seen it all here <laughs> in the first half. Well, someone didn't tell Texas College they could win this game because they're going all out on special teams. Block punt there by, looks like Crawford, number 44, was able to get up high over, over the Texas Southern line. You see him come untouched, jumps up at the highest point, blocks the kick. What a great athletic move, and, and that's how you sacrifice your body. He got back there, extended, and made the block, and now the Steers are back in business, this time starting from the 20. First and 10 from there as Texas College takes over the football. Cortez Griffin is the quarterback, working out of the I formation. He hands it to Burns, has Good a hole job. on the right side, scoots it back inside, and look at him drive his legs. A big gain right there for Edward Burns. Touchdown. He takes it in. They could not get him <laughs> down. You talk about some strong legs from that young man. Will and desire. That's exactly what you saw in that last play by Burns. Off the lead handoff, he was able to get good blocking up the front by the fullback, got to the second level, and watch this determination and will. Refuse to go down, keep pushing and pushing in the end zone. Texas College is back into this game, Butch. Well, as you can see, he broke a tackle here, and then right here he gets into it. They're trying to yank the ball football out, and that's great after one person has him and he's going to make the tackle. Then the next person can yank the ball out, but that did not happen there. And all of a sudden, we're, we, we got a ball game. Yeah, we have a ball game. <laughs> Texas College going for two. Griffin back to pass, rolling right, looking, looking. He's going to keep it, and he is in mm. for the score. So Texas College, college converts the two-point conversion, and they move on top, 8-7 to seven over the TSU Tigers. Well, Bush, correction, we don't have a game. We have a game <laughs> that Texas College is winning now, 8-7. to seven. Outstanding job there by Griffin to, to extend the play with his leg. You see him being patient in the pocket. Once you get to the outside edge, you're, you're able to stretch the defense, and that's exactly what Griffin did. He's able to sneak into the end zone for the two-point conversion. We should uh, point out at this point that uh, Homer Causey, who is the starting quarterback for TSU, is available. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I, it is possible <laughs> we may see him today. Yeah, well, you never know. Coach told me before the game, Asbury stated that it was only for emergency purpose only if he got into a game. Well, <laughs> <laughs> how do you define an emergency? <laughs> I know. <laughs> But I thought that was an overall good series by Texas College. They got some breaks there through the special teams. They had the muff punt, was able to recover that, and they was able to have the block punt against Texas Southern. So they're starting to build some momentum. I thought offensively they was able to settle down. Griffin did an outstanding job as a quarterback. But Burns, he's their go-to guy. He's their workhorse. I saw the fact that he was showing some heart and determination. 
And you saw that on that last touchdown run. Texas College, but they're actually making their own breaks, and that's, that's a big <laughs> part of this game, and that's why you know, they have taken the lead early in this one. Bradford Lewis is now getting set to uh, kick it off for the Steers. And let's see if the Tigers can get a good return here and, and get back on the move. Tigers haul it in at about the 20. And look at the return, dancing around and down the sideline. He goes, and it's number 24, Rudy Alonzo, with a big return. He hauled it in about the 20, found the, the gap right there, took it all the way out. So yeah. a big return for Texas Southern. Good job there by Rudy Alonzo. You want to get the momentum back on your team. And how you do it? With special teams. Alonzo was able to find that crease, was able to squeeze through there, lost his footing at the end. But outstanding job giving Texas Southern offense some good momentum. Great field position across the 50-yard line. Tigers come out first and 10 from about the 48-yard line on offense. Jamal Small making his first collegiate start tonight, and now he has him in good field position. Small working out of the gun, changing the play, actually. Small back to pass, looking downfield, can't find a receiver, and he is sacked. Mm. The Texas College defense, they, the pocket collapsed right around him. Several players right there for the Steers as they came up with the sack. As we take a look at the starting lineup here, of course, the big thing on that lineup is Jamal Small starting at quarterback for the TSU Tigers making his first start. He's looking for Fred Plummer and Malik Cross to come up and have a big gain and maybe help him out, make it a little better. Off the snap, Small hands it inside, and look at him go. That is number two, Malik Cross. Boy, can this guy burn it or not? Yeah, it looks like Actually, that's Davion Porter. Number seven, they Porter got, taking it all the way for the touchdown. And right there, that's their workhorse. That's who you have to give the ball to without Homer tonight at the quarterback position. Take the pressure off small, just straight and go. Just nothing but daylight, opportunity, and real estate. You see Porter, the blazing speed to get into the end zone for the Tigers. Good blocking up front by the massive offensive line by the Tigers. Once you get in that second level, you got to turn that third gear on. And right there, Porter turned that gear on and got into the end zone. But and that's what they had to do. They needed to do something to stop the momentum and send it the other way. And on for the extra point. Eric Medina's kick is good. And the Tigers go back out in front. TSU now leading Texas College 14 to 8. We're going to stay right here and, and not take a commercial break. We talk about that now. How important was that for them to get the good kickoff return? That put them in good field position. And then you have Porter coming through with a great, great run there. you got to find a way to kind of keep motivated and keep going offensively. Porter's the guy that they leaned on last week against Fred View. Well, right now he has two touchdowns for the Tigers. And if nothing else, you have a young quarterback. You want to take some of the pressure off of him, so why not hand the ball off a little bit and, uh, you know, let let him do his thing, and then it will make it a lot easier for Small. Well, yeah, you know, the best friend for a quarterback is a good running game, and Porter, he has the patience and the understanding of, of the, you know, what to bring to the table each and every week for the Tigers. They want to spread him out, and he's small enough to get behind that massive offensive line and be productive. A lot of action going on here in the first quarter, and, uh, and and it's on both sides of the football here. Medina to kick it off, and he has another one deep into the end zone. Right there is picked up by number one, and he will touch it down right there. That's Philip Collier, and he's not going to bring it back. Well, Butch, let's go see what Texas College is going to do this series. They have some luck there, getting two turnovers, producing two turnovers on the uh, special teams down there. When you see them offensively, let's see what Griffin can bring to the table, but Scoring drive, two plays, 48 yards, 58 seconds. That means Texas Southern offensively know exactly what they want to do when they get on the field and execute the plays. And that was a key play. The fumble may actually have helped them that time <laughs> because he picked the ball up and the defensive guys didn't really have time to react. 
We're going to start now with Texas College going first and 10 from their 25-yard line. And they're having some success in that I formation, mm -hmm. and there they go with the handoff to Burns again. This time he goes nowhere. He is stacked up right where he is. And their success is coming from their fullback. Their fullback is doing an outstanding job leading up the front for the tailback, opening up the holes for either Griffin or Burns. You know, we, they, we, I, I mentioned we talked to their offensive coordinator on the, on the top, and he said they plan to use a lot of wide receivers in this game, but we've seen them take a different strategy. They're going to that I formation, yeah. and they're trying to run the football. Second and 10 for the Steers. Griffin looking around, changing the play, it appears. Takes the snap, hands it to Burns, and once again, he is stacked up. Tigers have a maroon wall right there. Just no place to go. Derek Lowes, defensive end. Defensive tackle, excuse me, sophomore out of Mississippi was able to plug that gap and stand strong. Good gap assignment there by the defensive tackle. And not just get off his block, he was able to make the tackle as well in the backfield. Defense coming up big for Texas Southern. Now it's going to be third and about nine for the Steers. So Tigers trying to get the ball right back if they can. They're still working out of the eye formation. Griffin back to pass, looking around under pressure. He gets away, still scrambling, throws it out, and just threw that one away. He was just in a lot of trouble, and he just unloaded as quick as he could. Looks like that was Lee, number 89, playing defensive end in place of Bloom, Bloom that's injured. Good swim move to get inside of the tackle. You got to finish the play, forcing Griffin outside of the pocket. And he was smart enough to throw it, throw it away. Now it's fourth down. You know, this is their best down, but so far in the, <laughs> first, in the first quarter, every fourth down, he was able to catch a break and get the first down. Texas College coming up is going to be fourth and nine. Working out of the shotgun this time. And that's, that's just how they punt. They don't drop back very deep. They got this, the punter up really short. And uh, he kicks the punt, and it is down right there at about the 35, 36-yard line. And that is where Texas Southern will start first and 10 from that point. Well, don't go to the restroom because last time Texas Southern had the ball, they scored in 58 seconds, Butch. And, you know, they, you, I want to see what Smalls is going to do from a, a quarterback standpoint. We know Porter is their dynamic, explosive player uh, running the ball. But, you know, Smalls, in my opinion, he struggled a couple of times passing the ball, and he didn't look precise in his pro progressions as well. Tigers are going to start first and 10. Right there at about the 36-yard line. Small back in the I formation, calling out the signals. Turns around, hands it to Davion Porter. He has a hole. Porter breaks it out to the left side, has one man to beat, and he <laughs> is caught. And that young man is off to a great start tonight. Oh, he's feeling it right now, but He's definitely feeling it. He's in the zone. He knows how to attack this defense. You see him here, one cut back, cuts back into the outside, gets to the outside edge. Excellent job there by Porter. Ooh, good block up front by the, off, by the fullback to propel Porter to get to that second level, and it's nothing but speed and daylight. First and 10 for the Tigers, and they are back on the Texas College side of the field again. If you're just joining us, we mentioned at the top, the Tigers are starting a backup quarterback tonight, Jamal Small. He is making his first start, and so far so good uh, for Jamal Small and the Tigers. Hands it to Porter, starts right, breaks it back to the left, and he has not much room inside, goes Jamal Porter. Davion Porter as he's taken down after a short game. You know, this is uh, for Coach Asbury. This is his third year. He's coming off of two two and nine seasons, but they've made progress every year. We talked about how well the defense played last year, and, and we're seeing that he's got some of these athletes in place. So, I mean, the Tigers are, they expect to have a really big year. No question about that. Talked to Asbury during the media day, Texas Southern media day. He said, this is my money year, and the chance to have a full off season, have his guys in the in the facility throughout the summer. It's time to pay off for him early this season. Small working out of the gun. Has Five. a man wide open, and he has it. Takes it in for the touchdown. A big play right there by Malik Cross. You know, we said earlier that Cross and Plummer would have to step up and help the young quarterback. Somebody missed an assignment there, and Malik Cross was, like, wide open for the touchdown. You see Malik Cross running down the seams on the left-hand side. 
No defender in, in the close to him within 10 yards. Good job by, by Smalls to be able to even connect with that uh, receiver despite him being wide open. Safety came up for some reason, and that's, that's an early Christmas present right yeah. there. Malik Cross takes it in for the touchdown, and the Tigers now have put back-to-back -back scores together. And on to add the extra point is Medina. And TSU is just adding to their lead at this point. Right now it is 21-7, 21-8. Tigers in the lead with 3.05 to go in the first quarter. Are, are you surprised the way this is kind of unfolded here? Not really. I mean, last week again, uh, for Texas College at home, they struggled offensively, and they got, uh, they got down very quickly against their opponent. But Texas Southern, to me, from watching them last week, which against Prairie View, I knew offensively they had weapons. But I want to see what Smalls is going to do in the first career start. Up until that last touchdown play right there, I, I believe that he struggled sometimes during his progression. But he's playing phenomenal now. He's still having that confidence back and starting to pass the ball effectively. You know, Davion Porter, what can we say about him? He's an outstanding running back as well. He's able to show his explosiveness and his speed to kind of set the tone for Texas Southern all up front with their running game as well as getting in line, offensive line, in, in the motion of having a chance to kind of open up blocks for him, play out the play. Let's give some of the credit, too, to offensive coordinator Byron Brown because, boy, he set him up perfectly. Mm -hmm. You mentioned mm -hmm. Porter. A couple of hits to Porter. He takes it inside, makes a couple of nice gains, and then all of a sudden he pops it yeah. on top, and he has Malik Cross mm -hmm. wide open. So a good job mixing up the plays. Medina set to kick it off again, and he's been deep with every kickoff, and he knocks it back in the end zone again this time. This guy, what a weapon <laughs> to have a guy who can put it deep in the end zone every time, and there's no return on the play for Philip Collier. Here's the scoring drive, and there's a big play by Davion Porter. Cutting yep. around to the outside. Two plays. How do you like that? 64 <laughs> yards. Two plays, and this big play right here, the cross down the seam. No one, the safety bit up on the, on the pass play, and the cross was wide open for the touchdown. Okay, Texas College with the football now again. They start first and 10 from about the 25-yard line. They're at the 25 after the touchback. Griffin, their quarterback, working out of the gun this time. Hands it inside to Burns. And uh, there's a flag down on the play, but he's not down. Might go against Texas College for holding. As we wait for the call, but nice hard run there. Holding, number 64, offense. 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Well, it's all coming back because <laughs> that was a holding call. And uh, that's, you know, sometimes a holding call can be a defense best friend because <laughs> that's going to bring it back and it's going to put these guys in a – Big hole to start this drive, and we're still 2.54 to go in the first quarter. Action-packed first quarter here. <laughs> a lot of big impact plays on both sides of the ball for both teams. And just outstanding job for Texas College. Not really to give up right now in the first quarter. They're down 21-8, uh, but they're still fighting here in this first quarter, Butch, in my opinion. Steers with the football now, and they have a long way to go. It's going to be first and 20 to work with. They have trips on the right side. Griffin back to pass, under pressure again. He escapes, and he keeps, and he goes down after a short gain. I mean, he's got to think that he stole something, and these guys are trying to get a hold <laughs> of him to get it back because they've been all over him all night long. Well, I'm not surprised, but I thought without Amir Bloom, their sack leader, Texas Southern, wouldn't bring pressure. But right now, they have Griffin running for his life, play after play. Excellent job by bringing pressure from the outside, which forces Griffin up in the middle where the linebackers can bring him down for a loss. Second down for the Steers. And uh, let's see if they can get something going here because uh, it's been all Texas Southern now. That momentum has switched over to the other side. Second and long right now for Texas College as they go back to the I formation. Griffin hands it up the middle to the running back. I think that's going to be... Burns again, and he is stopped after a short gain inside. You know, he's kind of shifty, but I tell you what, that Texas Southern defense has been all over him tonight. And they're coming right at them. They want to shoot the gaps and kind of slow his momentum down. Jarvis Moore has been the most active defensive player for Texas Southern, in my opinion, the young man out of North Shore High School. Excellent job by Moore to be able to be aggressive at the point of attack. And if you look at that TSU secondary, they have a lot of backup players in the game right now. So they're getting to test a lot of these young men. And, uh, and so far, they're doing the job. Back to pass under pressure again is Griffin, and he goes down. 
by number 90. A big, big hit right there by Dedrick McWilliams. Came out, came out of nowhere to uh, make a fine play. Derek McWilliams. You see Derek McWilliams right there. Just come in, just beat his man up front. Mano Imano was able to find that gap, get in there. Brain Griffin now for a sack. You know, if they continue to do that, it's going to be a it's going to turn into a long night here pretty quick. For a little while there, mm -hmm. Texas College had some momentum, but now they're looking at fourth and forever, so they're going to punt this ball right back to TSU. High punt. Tigers. Number 24 is Rudy Alonzo. Takes it. He's into the clear, and Rudy is finally pulled down. Boy, it was a long time before a white shirt showed up there <laughs> as Rudy makes a nice return for TSU. Super job there by Alonzo. Special teams have been huge for both teams, but it's really playing in the favor of Texas Southern in this first quarter, setting up the excellent field position for the offense. Well, the Tigers have, have really had good field position all night, and when you're working under those conditions, it makes it a lot easier, especially when you have a quarterback who's making his first career start. Tigers will start first and 10 from about the 27-yard line. Jamal Small at quarterback, and so far so good for this young man making his first start. He's back in the gun. Snap from center, and it is inside for a short gain by the Tigers. The Steers came up with good defense there to stop the run. That was number 26. Tigers right now with a 21-8 lead. We're going to take a short timeout and be back with more TSU football action. Hello. I'm Alan Helfman, Vice President of River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge. This is my friend and customer, Miss Georgia Provost. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Chrysler 300. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee. Alan is the only car dealer I will ever buy a car from. Come see us at Kirby in the Southwest Freeway. Training is about more than muscle. It's about inner strength. So I push myself. That's why I serve in the United States Coast Guard. I train with the best, a team that shares my drive and commitment. We collect intelligence, guard our shores against drug smugglers, and keep our waterways safe because our nation expects more. If you expect more, maybe you were born ready. Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. It's the end of an era. All the parties, the stories. I'm going to miss your smell. You were my first. What? I knew it. I knew it's it. It's true. Oh, man, I'm sorry I broke your leg. I wrote a song. <clears throat> sorry. Here we go. Keep the good times going with the crisp, refreshing taste of Bud Light. Here we go. Whoa. Check out this new couch. Texas College tonight, and so far, it's been all Tigers in this one. They lead it 21 to 8, 21 to 8, and we are just about to start the second quarter. And Davion Porter was the key player for Texas Southern in the first quarter. Was able to start off fast, producing a couple of touchdowns for te Texas Southern offensively. Let's see if Coach Asbury gives him a break here in the second quarter. Tigers look like they're going to work out of the gun here as we switch sides to start the second quarter. You know, against Prairie View. Texas Southern was throwing the ball a lot at that point. Coach Byron, uh, Byron Brown wanted to pass the ball a lot. At one point, Coach Asbury said, hey, wait a minute, let's get some running plays in. And that's <laughs> when we got to see Porter coming in, making a, a, a big, big contribution last week. And he's picked up right where he's left off. Second down from the gun. The handoff goes back in the backfield to number 26. That is Jimmy Port Portea with a nice run right there for the Tigers, and he's close to that first down. Yeah, Porte is coming in now, kind of giving Porter a break because he's a well-deserved break after having an outstanding first quarter. Porte just want to follow his, his fullback up front, trying to find a seam in a gap, be able to get some positive yards and get close to the first down. The 
Otepko is one of those transfers from Ole Miss. And he's going to get the handoff again. A big hole this time, and he is chopped down at about the five. But look at that offensive line working hard for the Tigers, creating those big holes right there. And now TSU is knocking on the door again. Yeah, the offensive line is starting to wear down the defensive line of Texas College. As you can see, the running back just finding big holes. <laughs> Looks like a 59 right there, Butch, a big wide hole there, able to run down Broadway and get into the red zone. Tigers again try the middle, and it's nowhere. They are stuffed. Fine, fine defensive play. Several steers are, are there to make the big stop. Let's see what Texas College do. You know, having the defense on the field quite often throughout this first half, are they starting to fatigue here in this hot, humid weather in Houston, or are they going to be able to step up in this tough environment, especially here in the red zone? Can they produce another turnover or try to get a turnover for their defense? Well, they come from Tyler, Texas, so it's hot there too, so they should yeah. be ready. Tigers second and goal. Small from the shotgun. Lobs it off. He has a man. That's Davion Porter, <laughs> and he walks on in for the touchdown. That was pretty that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Yeah, very easy. He snuck back into the game, Davion Porter. I thought he was on the sideline for the main of the second quarter, but Coach Asbury put him back in the game for the swing pass. You see quarterback goes to the swing pass for Porter. Wide open for the touchdown. The Tigers are getting to do a lot of things on offense, and they're getting to see a lot of players, and so far it's all working out extremely well to this point. Eric Medina on for the extra point, and uh, he's been perfect so far tonight. Medina's kick is good, and all of a sudden, Texas Southern they're on the verge of, of having a blowout here, Lima. Oh, yeah, they're on the verge. And that's exactly what they wanted to do early in the first quarter. It's to set the tone offensively, establish the lead, and get some young players on the field. We're going to take a quick timeout now with Texas Southern leading Texas College. That score is 28 to 8. Find the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many, sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together. Welcome back to the oven, or as it's better known, BBVA Compass Stadium. But it is hot tonight down on that field, and so are the TSU Tigers. Right now, they lead Texas College 28-8 to with 13-15 to go in the second quarter. And they've done just about everything right tonight. Potipa right there with a nice run inside. He's, he's come on, and that drive was five plays, 27 yards. There's Potipa again with the run he stuffed inside. But then here we go with the touchdown pass. Pretty pass right there to Davion Porter. He's wide open, and the Tigers are off to that big lead. And it's been the Porter show all in the first half. He has three touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns and one receiving. This young man is playing outstanding football for the Texas Southern Tigers tonight. And off we go with the kickoff. Tigers Medina is getting a lot of work on that, but this time it's going to be returned. That's number one, Philip Collier. Takes it around the left side, tries to juke around, but he's finally yanked down at about the 23-yard line. 
So that is where the steers will go back on offense again. And I, we, we talked just a little bit about this on the top, but Rodney Blackshear is the head coach at Texas College, and he has a lot of ties to the Houston area. So he was coming in tonight, and I, I know he wanted to put on a good show, but so far uh, his team may be just a little manhandled in this one. Yeah, they, they not just manhandled, they outnumbered on both sides of the ball. You got Griffin and you got Burns, two good offensive players. But when you're going against a, a better team in Texas Southern Tigers, especially their defense coming after you and bringing pressure, it's going to make a long night for Texas College. Griffin working out of the gun, and he flares it out. Has his man. That's Collier, and he is uh, knocked down after about a short gain of about five or six. He's taken down. Big hit. That Tiger defense has definitely been impressive tonight. That's number five getting up slowly right there. Trey Walker. Of course, he's the all swack defensive back, and of course, look, he's trying to shake it off. Uh, this guy's a, a real pro prospect. Went in with a high hit there, but he took him down, and he stays in the ball game, so he appears to be all right. Second and about five for the steers. Griffin handing inside. He slips it off to Burns, and he's going to get nowhere. I mean, they were just sitting there waiting. Excellent job there by the defensive coordinator to call up a blitz. Safety blitz, which forces the running back Burns to the opposite side, right in the hands of the linebacker. You can see right there Burns trying to escape the pressure from the right side by the blitz, right in the hands of the linebacker, now making it third down. Third and a short two, two and a half coming up for the steers. So they, they would love to keep this ball so they could kind of get some of the momentum going back the other way because the Tigers... They're moving it all the way down every time they touch the ball. Working out of the gun. Griffin back to pass. Looking inside, and his pass is incomplete. Right there intended for his receiver right there. That's number 18. Bradford Lewis got his hands on it. Lewis wanted the call. He thought he might have been pass interference, but the officials do not agree. Yeah, Dobbins on the, on the defensive side for Texas Southern. You can see him gets right there, kind of high around the neck. But it was no flag against Texas, Texas Southern. Fourth down, I think they're going to go for this one. Is that Griffin in, in, the, in the ball game? Or is it, no, I think they're back in that short punt formation again. They just like to get that punter up there close. There's the kick. Deep to Rudy Alonzo. He hauls it in, starts around the left side. Makes a move, and he's pulled down. He had a lot of open spaces yeah. in front of him right there, but he is yanked down. Bradford Lewis, the junior wide receiver on that for Texas College. Excellent open field tackle right there to bring down the Texas Southern Tigers running. Texas Southern Tigers' next home game coming up for TSU will be against Alabama A&M on Saturday, September 20th. That one will kick off at 7 p.m. Be there because, as you can see, you're going to miss a lot of exciting TSU football. They have the offense rolling tonight, and they're starting a backup quarterback. Small with the pitch. It goes to Davion Porter, and he is upended in the backfield, and he's taken down for a loss. That may be for the first time tonight. They've hit him in the backfield. Jeremy McMillan, Jr., coming down and set out the box. Excellent job to fight off the block. And knock Davion Porter down in the backfield. You can see here, tall sweep to the right. Watch McMillan escape the block, but gets balanced and make a tackle in the backfield against Porter. Excellent job there by the defender. Tigers are going to have a second and 12, and they're going to work this one from the shotgun. Small back at quarterback. Looking to pass. Catch time, throws it deep, he has a man. That's the big tight end. He hauls it in and he's going to take it all the way for the touchdown. A huge play by Billy Rosenberg, taking it in for the touchdown. Number 81 for the Tigers. And they hadn't really looked his way <laughs> all night, but the one time they did, he answered it. That's a pretty nice over the shoulder catch. No doubt about that, 6-5. The tight end slash wide receiver Rosenberg, you see him go deep. Over the top of the safety, his height helped him there, getting the ball at the highest point, walking into her end zone. Good job by Smalls as he throws it over the safety's head, right where Rosenberg can get the ball and get into the end zone for the Texas Southern Tigers. 
Medina on for the extra point, and he stays perfect on the night, and the TSU Tigers, with 10.36 to go in the second quarter, all of a sudden, they're leading this ball game 35-8. <laughs> to eight. They have a lot of good things going on. Offensively, they're clicking. Smalls has gotten to the rhythm as a pocket passer. And you got Davion Porter running, doing an excellent job running the ball for the Texas Southern Tigers. They're clicking, passing, and running the ball. But defensively, they're able to get the Texas College off the field and three and out, which gives the offense more opportunities to produce touchdowns. At one point, uh, Butch, we thought this game was going to be back and forth, but Texas College is still in the – the lead at eight for eight, eight to seven with their running back getting the end zone. But right now, Texas Southern has, has dominated and controlled this game after the first four. Looks like Tigers off, uh, defensive coordinator Michael Veit made the changes on the sideline, made the adjustments, and, and since since they went for two and scored that two-point conversion, we have seen nothing from Texas College. It's been all Texas Southern on defense. How about that young man? Your first start, and you got a 35 to 8 lead. Two touchdowns, throwing, one supporter, and one down the field to Rosenberg. That young man, Jamal Smalls, has to be excited about the offense he's producing tonight for his Texas Southern Tigers. Jamal Small is a senior from New Jersey, so, you know, what a way to come in here. He's the backup quarterback and have a chance to start and contribute like this in a big game. Medina, once again, with a big kick all the way in the back of the end zone. It's a touchback. So Texas College will start again from the 25 and uh, see if they can do something to combat that TSU defense. Well, I, I believe it has to be started with, with their quarterback in Griffin. He was able to find some success by extending the plays with his legs. You see the scoring drive, two plays, 63 yards for Texas Southern as Rosenberg runs into the end zone. But back to Texas College, Butch, I really believe it starts with Griffin. He has to find a way to continue to extend the plays, find a way to get the ball to Burns as well. That one-two punch worked for them early in the first quarter. They have to go back to that. Cortez Griffin has been <laughs> under a lot of heat from the very first series of the game, and the Tigers uh, have been relentless. They, they just keep coming after the guy. He's working out of the shotgun, takes the snap, hands it off inside, and not much room there for Corey Sherman. Tigers with gang tackling on Corey Sherman as he is taken down after a short game. German normally plays fullback. Now he's playing running back. A big, stout runner, as you can see right there in the shot. A massive guy. He wants to lay heavy on you. He just want to drag two or three defenders. Maybe that can wear down the Texas Southern Tigers defense as Griffin try to find a way to get his team back into the end zone. They're in a deep, deep hole here. Second and five as they come out from the shotgun this time. Griffin back. Pitches it off to... His main man right there, and he is knocked down. Philip Collier, again, not much room inside as he tried to run the little counter back, and uh, just not a lot of open spaces right there. Number 50, Adrian Gable, defensive lineman senior, is able to stay on the outside. You always want to keep outside edge in containment. Right there, Gable was able to stay home and watch as he brought down the Texas, uh, Texas College runner. This is a fun game to play in, though, if you're on the Texas mm -hmm. Southern side of this because the whole sideline gets excited about this because they know everybody's going to play tonight, mm -hmm. or at least it looks like that mm -hmm. right now. So you really have a, you're really generating a lot of excitement. The handoff inside, it goes again to number 27, Corey Sherman, and he's spun down close to that first down. Let's see what the mark is. It looks like he got it. They are moving the chain, so it's a first down for the Steers, and that's their first first down in a long time. And I said Sherman is their bruiser back. He wants to lean heavy on the defenders and wear you down right there. And when he was spun around, he was able to still have momentum and lean forward and pick up the first down. First down, the Steers still working out of the shotgun. Griffin, as we said, has been under fire all night. Back to pass, quick one, has his man, and he slips away. It looks like it's number 11. That's Terrence Carr, and that's a pretty big game there, and that's a big first down, and now they are in deep in TSU territory. Impressive play there by the sophomore. Carr was able to get behind the defender and catch the pass and make some, some room for the offense. But look at Griffin standing tall in the pocket, feels the pressure from the blitz. But look at Carr get away from the first defender, the second defender, and keeps moving his feet out of bounds. Excellent job by Griffin to spot his guy on a quick slant. 
Carr was able to get away from one defender, two, to watch his legs, but keep pushing, keep pushing, picks up some extra yards. Steers will start first and 10 from about the 34 yard line and the handoff goes inside again to Corey Sherman. And, and he's a big guy moving that line on the left side. So uh, it didn't look like much, <laughs> but, but now it looks like it's going to be three or four yards. You have to have a bruiser back. You can't have just a, a speeder guy, a speed guy, a guy that can get to the outside edge. you got to have a guy like Sherman. You see him here taking on those, those hits up front, which will wear down that defensive line, especially the linebackers by the Texas Southern Tigers. And this is working for him thus far in this series. Well, it is on this series, but they may be a little late to the party with that <laughs> because they should have done that earlier and got a little bit of uh, ball possession. But let's see. Now we're going to go at second down and about six to go for the Steers. They're working out of the gun. Griffin back to pass again, looking downfield, forced to scramble to his left. He's in trouble, slips away from a tackler, and he is looks like he's down just shy of the first down. Well, it looks like Griffin was trying to find something out of nothing there, Butch. Kind of baiting the, the defense. Before losing possession of the ball, third down. Third down. You see Griffin gets away from the defender right there. Lose control of the ball. But they ruled him down, not a fumble. Lemont, if you look at the stats, Texas College has actually had some success rushing the ball. In the first quarter, Burns carried 11 times for 54 yards. So they have had success running it. They just haven't had the opportunity very much. Third down and short now for the Steers. They will operate out of the gun. Griffin sneaks up and he keeps it. And let's see, he got close to the sticks. It all depends on the mark, whether or not he comes up with the first down. Smart play there by Griffin. Trying to catch Texas Southern defensive line off guard as he walks up to the line of scrimmage. You see him here, quarterback seat, sneak, get right behind your center, lean forward, and got the first down. It's quite a job, a yeah. drive for the Steers here. Uh, they had to do something to try to keep that Texas Southern offense off the field, and that's what they have done by picking up a couple of first downs here, and now they're trying to put some points on the board with 6.05 to go in the second quarter. Back in the eye formation, Griffin fakes the handoff. Back to pass, throws it up. He has a man near the goal line, and let's see. What? No? Looks like the Tigers came oh, up yeah. with an interception. Number 23, Michael Holmes. And Holmes came up with the interception. How about that TSU defense coming up big? Holmes is coming up big right there out of Jones High School, able to fight off that came an offensive player right there as he's fighting with the receiver, turns around just in time for the interception. So Michael Holmes steals one away and the Tigers have a big lead 35 to eight as we take a timeout. When we send an IBW electrician to your job site, I expect my electrical worker to be neat. Uh, I expect him to be professional. I expect him to be on time. Uh, I expect him to be productive. I expect him to do everything in his power or her power to ensure that employer is successful. Uh, because what's going to get us more work is, is successful jobs. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. 
Welcome back. You are watching the TSU Tigers in their home opener against Texas College. And uh, as we said before, it has been all Texas Southern so far. They've done it on defense with two turnovers. They've done it on offense with the backup quarterback. And uh, I, I think they've got complete control of this one right now. It's 35 to 8. Absolutely, they have control of the game right now with their offense back on the field. Let's, let's see how they continue to have the success here in the second quarter. But, you know, once you get up to a big league like this and you're playing on well on all cylinders, can you continue this momentum before Small. halftime? Cranking it out deep, and he has a man, and it is incomplete. Are you surprised by that one? Yeah, I am. I, I'm kind of surprised that they go deep on first down. You know, go with you know, Davion Porter. I think he's been playing excellent football in the first in this first half. But you take your shots. I mean, you're backed up deep in your own territory. You think you can catch him sleeping, and uh, he's got a strong arm, and he kind of showed that off right yeah. there. Going deep early and often, man-to-man -man coverage. Like you said, Butch, take a shot. Second and 10, and that's Davion Porter, and he has no place to go. A lot of white jerseys stuffing him inside. And that's the bad side of going deep on first play, on first down. Now you force your team to kind of run the ball on second down to kind of establish yourself in the line of scrimmage. Texas College kind of recognized that early, stopping the running, running back in the backfield. That was Kendall Denson in on the carry there. Of course, the Tigers are going to be getting a lot more people in there now as that lead gets bigger and bigger and as we're approaching halftime here. So now it's going to be third and about 10. Tigers working out of the gun. Jamal Small is the quarterback. Small looking downfield again. Has a man. This time Ooh. it's complete to McLeak, Mc, Malik Cross, and he is nailed. Jeremy McMillan, the junior strong safety, comes down, run downhill. As you see, Cross gets annihilated right there by McMillan. What a big play. You're looking at the, the, the spot. He is short of the first down, so the Tigers will have to punt it back over to the Steers. And again, Butch, it goes back to the first play of this, uh, that series. Going deep early and often hurts your offense. Doesn't establish any momentum or flow. And the punt is underway by C Corey Carter. Gets a nice bounce, hauled in by Collier. Cuts it back inside, Ooh. and he is knocked down at about the 31. So a nice punt, but a, a good stop there by the Tigers. Tigers can do no wrong in this one so far, 35 to 8 over Texas College. Hello, I'm Alan Helfman, Vice President of River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge. This is my friend and customer, Miss Georgia Provost. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Chrysler 300. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee. Ellen is the only car dealer I will ever buy a car from. Come see us at Kirby in the Southwest Freeway. Training is about more than muscle. It's about inner strength. So I push myself. That's why I serve in the United States Coast Guard. I train with the best. A team that shares my drive and commitment. We collect intelligence, guard our shores against drug smugglers, and keep our waterways safe, because our nation expects more. If you expect more, maybe you were born ready. Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. Ugh, why does she pack these things? I ate one by accident last time, and we won. It's good luck. But it tastes like a dirty old tree branch. What the heck is Quino? But this is for first place. What is that, a loofah? It's a Quino. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. And we are back again, Texas Southern, rolling along here, taking on Texas College. It is 35 to eight with 4.18 to go in the second quarter. Let's see what Texas College can put together a, a complete series this time. Last time they were able to move the ball down the field with Sherman running the ball and Griffin was trying to find a way to get going. Let's see what they do now with Burns back in the game. 
Texas College out of the I formation. The handoff goes deep to Burns, and he's got no place to go. Look at that big wall up front. He just can't. There's no place to go at all. You know, Texas Southern Butch, in my opinion, is playing excellent from the outside in. The outside linebackers, defensive men, have been doing a great job throughout the game, keeping contained, forcing the running back to stay inside. And, you know, and we're starting to see so many more different players out there now for TSU, and they're coming in and they're making a big, big uh, impact. Davion Trahan playing at uh, defensive back was, was in on a play a couple of minutes ago. So we were seeing a lot, a lot of the reserves in, and they're getting the job done. Second and 10. Griffin back to pass. Pocket collapse, and he is knocked down. We've seen a lot of that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Another sack on the play. Looks like the Christopher Lee on the sack there for Texas Southern Tigers, number 89, comes that back around. <laughs> And once he comes back around, but he finds the quarterback right there for the sack. Steers coming out again, and uh, like you said, they moved the ball well the last time, but uh, now they got themselves in, in, a, in a hole here. It's going to be third and ten for Texas College. Cortez Griffin, the quarterback, working out of the shotgun. Has the snap. He has a little time this time, but now it doesn't. And he's rolling out of the pocket. He scrambles. He keeps, and he's going to get the first down for the steer. So Cortez Griffin does it with his feet, picks up the first down, and the steers are in business. And right there, he's surveying the sur uh, secondary, but he pulls it down, using that speed to get back to the right side and outside. He's kind of coming up limping a little bit, but, you know, Griffin is a guy, he can beat you with his arm and his legs if you give him enough time to do that. And he's found a way to get the first down for his offense. As you see Griffin down, he, when he went to the sideline on that last play, Butch, I didn't know what happened, but he came up kind of hobbling a little bit. And now you see him straight. Oh, it looks like well, a cramp. You, yeah, you said it earlier on that they may be having trouble with the heat, and that's what it looks like. It looks like they're trying to stretch him out. So we'll get a chance to see who the backup quarterback is, maybe if they can't get him ready to rock and roll. It's definitely hot and humid here in Houston right now. Early September, a lot of players are coming in and coming out outside of the camp. This is the second week of college football, and a lot of guys still trying to fight their way through a butch and trying to learn how to adjust the game time conditioning. It is, and, it, and it's and it, no matter you could be in great shape, but you come out here tonight and it and it said 90 degrees at game time, which meant it had to be close to 100 on yeah. the field, and. Uh, it's just tough. It's tough. And speaking of tough, there's a young man in the game now at quarterback. And let's see if we can spot who that is. It's like number 12. And that's Milton Harper coming into the game for Griffin. Harper hands it off right there. Not much going on for Edward Burns. Again, no game. That TSU defense not giving up much at all right now. And what we're seeing is a lot of depth issues compared to Texas Southern. They have a deep bench. Texas College is a smaller school, so that means they have limited amount of players on that sideline. And right now, those guys are starting to feel it, sort of wear down here before with two minutes under two minutes to go for halftime. Okay, Milton Harper on at quarterback because Griffin was having some cramps over on the sidelines. Uh, let's see if he gets to pass the football here. He's working out of the I formation. Milton Harper throws it out and is going to be incomplete on that play but I mean I tell you what the Tigers are relentless with that pressure pressure up up the middle that time forcing the ball to go high as Harper tried to go to the swing pass to his receiver real quick didn't work out that quite that well for them brings in up a huge third down before halftime it's third and long and, and, and you know they would love to get this first down because they don't want TSU to get the ball back with uh, a minute and 50 seconds to go and let them have a chance to get another score so uh, Cortez Griffin appears to be okay. Looks like he's shaking off that, that uh, cramp. And he's back in at quarterback, and he's working out of the shotgun. Third down and 10, and the officials had said that uh, the steers have taken too much time. <laughs> Delay a game there on Griffin. Still third down. That was a huge, huge mistake right there by Texas College.
So they're going to come out third down and 10 to go. And don't forget, we have the rebroadcast of this game coming up, the TSU football rebroadcast. It's coming up on Tuesday at noon. Don't want to miss that one. And a long pass down the sideline is incomplete, so that's going to bring up fourth down. But we have the rebroadcast of this game, TSU Tigers taking on Texas College. If you miss it, you can check it out again Tuesday at noon. Should be a lot of fun if you're a Tiger fan. <laughs> Impressive job so far on both sides of the ball by the Texas Southern Tigers. If I'm a Texas Southern alum, I'd be very proud of my team the last two weeks. And it's an opportunity to start the year off at 2-0. Two, two and oh. And last season, the last two seasons, they've only won two games. So here we go again. Texas College on the punt. The ball is bouncing around, and it is finally picked up. And that is number 24 again. Rudy Alonzo. Actually, that was Dejan Druitt on mm -hmm. the return. He got back, and like we said earlier, we expect to see uh, uh, several more, uh, you know, Tigers in off the bench and getting some getting some playing time. It's a good opportunity to get everybody in there and get them some experience. But that's a good return. Tigers near midfield now, first and 10, with 128 to go in the half. Small back to pass. Has a lot of time. Look at him. He can't find a receiver, <laughs> but he's got time. Finally, oh. he gets a man, and the ball bounces in and out of the hands right there of Larry Clark. Had a shot at making the catch, but couldn't quite hang on to that one. Yeah, Larry Clark to third coming across the field. You see it all the time by Smalls. Steps up in the pocket. Oh, Larry Clark, wish he had that play over to do over again because he had to step on the defender. He just couldn't bring the ball in into his body. Tigers come up second and 10 with a good opportunity to put some more points on the boards before halftime. The handoff goes inside. Big play and a big hole right there for the TSU Tigers. Is that Rudy Alonzo, number 24, taking the handoff? Nice gain inside. Clock continues to run. TSU trying to get back to the line. Picking up the first down on that run. You see Alonzo trying to find any crease or any hole within that offensive line. Small back to pass. Scrambles away from the pressure. Still scrambling. Looking around, trying to find a receiver. He has a man oh. wide open. It's Alonzo. As a flag goes down, it may be a late hit on the steers. Let's see what the officials have to say. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 43, defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And the Tigers catch a huge break there, Butch. Roughing the passer on the quarterback gives them an opportunity to make up for that play. You know, as the rule of thumb is never throw across your body, and especially across the field. Small's getting his first career start tonight. Broke that rule, but was able to bail, get bailed out with that flag. You know, when those big old defensive linemen have to chase you all over the field <laughs> like that, <laughs> they want to get something out yeah. of it for your trouble. And that time they got caught with the late hit on Small. That's going to give the TSU Tigers a first down at the 25 with 47 ticks to go on the clock. Jamal Small is the quarterback. Working out of the eye formation, but it looks like he's trying to change the play. Taking the snap, snap and hands off to Alonzo, and he sprints around the right side. It's going to be close. Alonzo near the goal oh, line, fumble. and he's hit. The ball pops loose, and let's see who made the recovery. Looks like uh, Texas College. Texas got College it. may have come up with the recovery. I've seen no signal yet, and a man is down. That might be Rudy Alonzo. He is still down on the field. Took a big hit there. You see him getting to the outside. Use the speed, get away from the defender. But as he gets closer to the goal line, right there, he was upended. Rolling on the field is that the ball was fumbled and recovered by the defense at the one-yard line. It will be first down, Texas College. Well, that was a great run, but a great hit. And so Texas College comes up with the turnover. But right now our concern is for Rudy Alonso. He is still down on the field, and he's being attended to right now by uh, the TSU trainers and doctors. You can see Coach Asbury goes out there and check on his players because he's concerned 
Alonzo had the speed and the momentum going into the end zone. One guy hit him high, another one hit him low as he remains on this field. And everyone's concerned about his health. Well, that's a good sign right there. He appears to be trying to shake it off. He's having trouble breathing, but he, he's up, and, and that is definitely a good sign. As you can see right here, a defender goes low, hit him below his waist as a, another one comes behind him and hits him high. Right there, which jarred the ball out for the fumble. And he's up, yeah. and that's, that's a good sign. That's a great sign for him to walk off the field in his own power. Looks like he probably just got the win out of knocked out on the books. They are giving him a, a nice ovation here in the stadium, and boy, he deserves it. Rudy Alonzo going off. Little guy's 5'9", but he has quick feet. And a lot of heart, because that was a tough hit. It was a tough hit, but he'll be back. It looks like he's okay. He's still holding on to that uh, right shoulder a little bit, though. We'll have to see what, what's going on with that. But as you mentioned before, Lemont, it was a fumble. Texas College did recover, and they will have the ball on the one-yard line, or even maybe even closer than that on the half-yard line. Well, Butch, we've seen some weird things happen in this first half with turnovers. Do you just quarterback <laughs> sneak it at this point? I mean, it's 36 it's seconds to go in the half. What, what do you do in this situation? You play it safe, and I would, I would just kneel the ball and try to regroup at halftime. But well, he can't kneel in the end zone, so he's yeah. got to try to sneak it out there, and let's see. He pushes it out and maybe got a yard or two there. Good good play. Excellent point, having a chance to push it past the uh, one-yard line. So it would not be a safety. And just let the clock run out. I mean, they played hard throughout the first quarter. But that second quarter, they was outmanned by Texas Southern. If you're Coach Darrell Asbury, you have to be very happy with your team and, and the first half that they have turned in here tonight. Yeah, on both sides of the ball, offensively, they set the tone. What Devion Porter and defensively, they was able to maintain that lead in the second quarter. And that is the end of the first half. It's been all TSU here at Tigers lead Texas College 35-8. to eight, and, and we're getting set. Because we know in the second half, we're going to get to see an awful lot of new faces. New faces, new opportunities. A lot of guys will get some chance to play, get some game time reps for the Texas Southern Tigers. Well deserved. Hard off season. Had a full off season as well for Coach Asbury. It's time for him to reward some of these young players in the second half. They have the big lead, but just how important is it for them to come out in the second half after you get in there and just, you know, maybe take it down and, and stuff in another touchdown just to, you know, kind of, keep that momentum going. Well, what I would try to do if I was Coach Asbury, I'd bring my starters out for one more series, have them get a chance to move the ball and adjust to having the lead like this after halftime, produce some touchdown, produce a touchdown or some points, and from there, I would bring in my secondary guys. It is, and, but this is, uh, I, we, you know, I know we, we touched on it earlier, but for this team to start 2-0 and after finishing 2-9 and last season, that would be a tremendous boost you know to the university to the football team to overall morale mm -hmm. period and that just starting off this 2-0 having a chance to beat your cross time rival rival in the first week and taking that momentum to tonight against texas college is outstanding and at this time we're going to go down to the sideline where nick strong is standing by nick take it away Hey, I'm here with head coach Darrell Asbury. Coach, to have the defense only giving up eight points with all the injuries that you had coming into tonight's game. Are you satisfied with your ones? And not only your ones, but your twos as well. No, not really. We, we, we're real sloppy. We're playing sloppy football. And, and, you know, like I just told the guys, you know, we need to, we need to still stay fundamentally sound. We had a bunch of good plays, but I'm not, I'm not very happy with our overall team performance. We need to pick it up a little bit. Coach Davion Porter on the offense, two touchdowns, and you got a swarm of quarterbacks back there. What are you looking for in the next half from these guys? Uh, the next half, we're going to start um, Christoph. We'll start him at quarterback, and then we'll get, let him finish, the, finish out the second half. But we're going to try to pick the tempo up a little bit, throw the football around a little bit more, and continue to try to uh, get, the, get a productive offense and win the kicking game. We got to go in here and clean this kicking game up. Coach, on the way out, any word on Rudy Alonzo over there? He's fine. He just had a stinger, but he'll be back the second half. All right. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. That's head coach Darrell Asbury on the, here on the TSU Sports Network. We'll be right back. You're watching TSU Football.
find the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many, sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, we must learn to work together. We're at halftime here at BBVA Compass Stadium where Texas Southern, the Tigers are leading Texas College 38 to eight, 35 to eight. Tigers with a big lead, but right now we are enjoying the halftime. Let's listen in to the Ocean of Soul.
Percy Cruzo. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchies. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. When we send an IBW electrician to your job site, I expect my electrical worker to be neat. Uh, I expect him to be professional. I expect him to be on time. Uh, I expect him to be productive. I expect him to do everything in his power or her power to ensure that employer is successful. Uh, because what's going to get us more work is, is successful jobs. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. Welcome back, everyone. And if you're a Texas Southern fan, you have to be extremely happy out there tonight because Texas Southern is leading Texas College 35-8 to eight at the half, and it's been a total dominant effort. No question. It's been a dominant effort on both sides of the ball for the Texas Southern Tigers. Starting with their quarterback, Jamal Smalls, getting his first start here tonight, impressive in the first half. Yes, he did not know he was going to start till he got here, found out he was coming <laughs> out, and he's actually played a pretty good game, but he's had a lot of help from a young man named Dev 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 Devonian Porter, who's just done an outstanding job. Yeah, Davion Porter's done an outstanding yeah. job by running the ball, establishing himself early with the two touchdowns. And midway in the third, I mean, second quarter, he was able to get that receiving touchdown as well. Let's take a look at some of those highlights because there were a lot of them in the first half. Of course, we mentioned number seven. He did a lot of damage. But right now, that's an early incompletion in the pass as the Steers had the football trying to move. And then here comes the big interception right here on the top for the Tigers. And that set the tone early in the first quarter and first series, giving Jamal Ch Small a chance to go deep to his receiver for the touchdown. How about that? He came to knock down, close down there to set up the touchdown run. It's going to come right here by Porter. And look at that hole. You know, you've, you could have driven the proverbial <laughs> truck through that for sure. Davion Porter, what a first half he had. When you look at the numbers, Davion Porter, seven carries for 81 yards and two touchdowns rushing. He also had a touchdown uh, receiving. But Texas College was able to get some breaks here. You see right there the, the punt bouncing off the Texas Southern Tiger player helping Texas College to kind of continue that momentum going in, in the first quarter. This was a bizarre play because I think up to this point, I'm not sure they had a first down. No. And that may be how they got their, their first first down of the, of the ball game right there. Which led to their first touchdown. You see Burns here getting to the outside, establishing himself. But look at the will and determination by Burns to get in the end zone for Texas College. He just kept those legs moving and moving, and he got six points. And then at this point, they go for two, and they actually went out in front. Well, they actually did go in front with their quarterback there. You see Griffin trying to find a way to extend the play, sneaking in the end zone. That's one of my favorite plays, the fumble yeah. off the snap in the gun, <laughs> and then Davion does the rest. Speed and real estate, that's all you have right there with Davion Porter. And you, you look at this game, and, and the Tigers really, I know Coach Asbury said there were a lot of aspects he wasn't pleased with, but when you come out of the first half and you're leading 35-8, to eight, here's the touchdown pass to Porter, you got to be, be happy with some of the stuff. I mean, you know, head coaches find the negative in any positive, but right now Texas Southern, in my opinion, is playing outstanding football offensively. They made some miscues, but they was able to recover and put up some points as well. And there's Jamal Small again. He had a lot of success yeah. early. In the, and look at this one. Mm -hmm. What a play to Rosenberg. Great catch over the shoulder, and the big tight end takes it on in for the touchdown. He throws it deep to Rosenberg, 6'5", tight end. Only place that where Rosenberg can catch it in stride to be able to separate himself from the defenders for the touchdown. 
Small was six of nine in his first start for 146 yards. That's not too shabby. I thought he threw the ball more than nine times, but apparently <laughs> with uh, Davion Porter running the way he was running, that's all they needed was nine passes. The one-two punch between Porter and da um, between Davion Porter and Smalls was enough for the Texas Southern Tigers in the first half. Let's look at some of the other numbers because, as we said on the top, TSU just dominated this one, and it shows in the numbers as uh, the Steers really couldn't generate much going. They did get some rushing yards. As we can look at it right here, you see the difference in the total yards there. Texas Southern, 278 to 143 for the Steers. And you see balance on the Texas Southern side of the ball. You see 132 and 146. However, Texas College is one-dimensional. Depending on the running game in the first half, they got to step it up, passing the ball in order for them to get back into this game. But I know Texas College came in this game, into this game. They wanted to throw the football, but when you look at those numbers, 39 yards passing, <laughs> yeah. they did a lot better when they just got in that I formation yeah. and just played smash mouth football. Yeah, they have Sherman, their big bruising back. He's able to lay heavy and push that pile to help them move the chains. But in order for them to get back, they got to go back with Griffin, their quarterback. He has to extend the play and help them move the ball offensively. Well, it'll be interesting to see some of the young Tigers coming in the game <laughs> yeah. and see them get that experience now. Oh, the second half, expect a lot of the young players from Texas Southern to get some reps. They had a chance to have a complete offseason this year. Now it's time for them to get some game reps. Should be an exciting second half, just like the first half, as the Tigers continue to try to improve to 2-0 on the young season. We'll be right back with the second half kickoff. Cruzo. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchie's. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. When we send an IBW electrician to your job site, I expect my electrical worker to be neat. Uh, I expect them to be professional. I expect them to be on time. Uh, I expect them to be productive. I expect him to do everything in his power or her power to ensure that employer is successful. Uh, because what's going to get us more work is, is successful jobs. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. Welcome back, everyone. We are just about to start the second half of the TSU Tigers game versus Texas College. Thank you for joining us tonight. And, of course, the Tigers are out there loosening up, and uh, it's a good thing because it's a hot night. But I tell you what, they have been smoking hot on the field. A big interception early on. And then that guy is making his first start at quarterback. Jamal Small came up with a nice pass right there to set up a touchdown. And he's just been outstanding. You know, he, he's done just about everything you could ask him to do coming in in that situation tonight. And there is Davion Porter. Nice, nice play there with a the long pass right there to Rosenberg. Big, big play. So, I mean, the Tigers have done so many things well tonight. Yeah, they've been playing a complete offensive game, in my opinion. You had Davion Porter set the tone, Butch, offensively for them running the ball, which gave Jamal Smalls a chance to kind of calm down and settle as a quarterback. And once he got going as a quarterback, it was lights out, producing three touchdowns, being able to spread the ball around to various players. Now, Texas College is an NAIA school, so this is what they expect it to do, but sometimes you don't always do what you're supposed to do. So from that standpoint, for the Tigers – this is pretty good. If you're coming out and beating a team you're supposed to mm -hmm. beat and you're coming out and you're beating them with authority, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's a real positive in itself. You have to have a chance. Well, <laughs> you know, Coach Asbury in the shot right there right before halftime. He's a little disappointed in his team. But to me, I felt like his team has been aggressive and dominating this game. 
through the first half. Well, he's he's a lot more happy than he's yeah. letting on. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> of course, he's an old quarterback. Mm -hmm. He was a quarterback at Jackson State, so uh, you know you can never have too many points when you're talking about a, an old quarterback. We mentioned on the halftime show, Bush that anticipate a lot of young players to play. A lot of the veterans will get a chance to sit down and relax. I want to see which player would step up first defensively for the Texas Southern Titans. Well, that's something you definitely want to want to see. You do want to see that they have the big lead, but you want to see them come out strong and you want to see them, you know, make a nice drive and then call it a night and afterwards and <laughs> go sit down and, and cheer on your, your, your teammates. Yeah, no question about that. Have a chance to everybody get a piece of this, this success tonight and have a chance to uh, embrace this win as a whole. Tigers is good. Their Tigers will receive the football first, so they will have a chance to do exactly what we're talking about. See if they can take the ball, take it the distance, and uh, put another score on the board. And the kick goes to La Christopher Lee. He pulls it in around the 19. Cuts back to his left, takes it up the middle, and he's finally pulled down at about the 32. So that's where the Tigers will start on offense right there. And let's take a look and see who they send back out. And they have a lot of the starters coming back out, but I think, let's see, who we, who's that quarterback here? We haven't seen the quarterback. It looks like number 11. Jay Kristoff. Jay Kristoff. 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 Yes, Kristoff is coming in at quarterback. A Louisiana native. Went to, we'll see what he what he has to offer. Coach uh, Asbury said at the half he wanted to take a look at him, and he's back there. He's got a lot of the starters in there, though. I see Malik Cross and some of the other guys. First and 10, he hands it. A big play right there off tackle. That's number 27, Kendall Denson on the carry. Denson coming in as a fresh back for the Texas Southern Tigers offense. Want to try to establish himself early. A redshirt senior out of Louisiana. Picked up about... Three and a half, four yards on that play. So that's what the Tigers are looking at. Looks like second and about six. As Jay Kristoff moves in at quarterback. He's a big guy, 6'4", 205 pounds. Sophomore quarterback. Good pass. <laughs> and he shows off his arm right away. It did not take long. The pass to Larry Clark, the second. A big play, and there's the, the completion for the first down for the Tigers. So the young man comes in, the sophomore's first pass. First completion. Good rhythm there coming out his break. Able to catch the receiver as he turns around. Great job by the quarterback. Tigers are doing exactly what we talked about before. They're coming out. They're keeping that momentum rolling. And so far, it's worked out really well. Back the handoff goes to Kendall Denson. He has a hole. Cuts it back inside. Denson is finally wrapped up right there. And he's another young man from Louisiana making a nice, nice carry. And what Coach Asbury wants to do, Butch, early in this third quarter is keep the change going as well as the clock. I mean, with this lead 35 to 8, he want to maintain this lead, but also keep that clock rolling. Well, the luxury of having a big lead like this is you, you really get to look at so many of your guys under game-type conditions, and, and that's a luxury you don't always have. Jake Kristoff calling the signals, working out of the gun. Back to pass, he has time. Fires to a wide open man, that's number 85 again. Larry Clark, the second. Yeah, Clark is his favorite target right now in this first series for the, for the quarterback, able to find him across the middle. Right before the safety got there, excellent pitch and catch between the quarterback and the receiver. Well, nice mix of the run and the pass here too. They, yeah. They're keeping uh, Texas College completely off balance here. First and 10. Tigers on the attack from the 39-yard line. The give goes to Denson again. He goes off tackle, and he bulls his way for about seven or eight yards. We've talked about that offensive line a yeah, couple of times, but they that. are doing an excellent job just creating those big old holes there. And the Tiger running backs are taking full advantage of it. Impressive job by the offensive line throughout the game. You see them just moving guys backwards. No penetration at all for Texas College 
in my opinion, throughout this game. Second down and about four for the Tigers on offense. It'll be interesting to see what this young man does. Jay Kristoff getting his chance to shine a little bit. Fakes the handoff. Keeps on the bootleg. Couldn't run it. Passes, oh. and it is incomplete. He throws it behind his intended receiver there. That's number 14, Tracy Johnson. The ball was right behind him. He just couldn't quite get his hands on it. Yeah, that's the first bad play by Jay Kristoff. Had a defender in his face, as you see, trying to roll to the right. Just a little behind the receiver. But great way to just kind of stay patient in what he wanted to do, but it just was behind the receiver on that last play. Well, what do you think? He looks pretty good. I mean, he yeah. does not look like he's rattled at all. He no. appears to be uh, calm, cool, and collected. Now he's got his first third down. A big third down coming up here. Third and about four. Working out of the gun is Kristoff. And the ball, Whoa. the snap is low. It gets away, and all he can do is fall on it. So the Tigers have a big loss. That's a loss of almost 15, 16 yards on the play. So TSU will have to punt it away to start the second half. And that's the difference between guys playing on in game situation and guys not really having an opportunity to have have that chemistry between each other. The quarterback in the center needs to be on the same page, especially in the shotgun formation. And on that last play, the center snapped the ball right before the quarterback was ready, which forced Texas Southern down to punt the ball. Corey Carter on to punt it away for the Tigers. And he gets off a beauty. Fair catch is called for, but the ball is in the back of the end zone, but we do have a flag down. And we will see what the officials have to say about this. I think the official forgot to turn <laughs> on his mic, but what we are sure of is the penalty appears to be against Texas College, and so they're going to be really backed up on this. Let's see what, how they sort this out. If you're on the other side, Lee mind if you're Texas College, well, let's see. Here he goes. Illegal substitution, 12 players in the field on the receiving team. The penalty is declined. First down, Texas College. So Texas College will start first and 10 from the 25 when we come back. TSU leading 35 to 8. Find the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many, sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together. Watching Texas Southern football, and tonight it has been all Tigers. They lead Texas College 35 to 8. And believe it or not, we did have a ball game for a little while early on. But check out the sophomore quarterback coming on in the second half, Jay Kristoff, showing a lot there. And then Denson, Kendall Denson, 
showing he got he has some wheels also as he takes it in for a nice game. And again, Kristoff just a little bit behind the intended receiver. That might have been a little case of nerves because he had a guy who was wide open as we get back to play. And once again, that Tiger defense just stuffed Edward Burns in the backfield. Yeah, Dobson there are able to come off the right side and make a play in the backfield on Burns. Stops him right in the tracks. Second down and about 12 right now for the Steers as they come out. Uh, Griffin still in at quarterback. They're back in that I formation. We mentioned before how they did have some success running the football, and it looks like they're going back to that right now. And he, as I say that, he passes the football. <laughs> Incomplete pass out to the right. He was trying to hit number 88 on the play, and it was incomplete. The Texas Southern Tigers continue to bring pressure up the middle there, able to get in Griffin's face as he's trying to set his feet to throw the ball. You see pressure up the middle by number 91, which is forcing Griffin to throw the ball a lot quicker and take some hits at, as well from the defender from Texas Southern. They're going to be very, very happy with their defensive effort when, by the time this one is ov over with because they've done a lot of things right on defense. Third down and about 11 coming up for the Steers. Griffin out of the gun. Back to pass. Oh, he Back. tried to get it off, but he is sacked again. Griffin hit behind the line. Looks like it's Quentin Salisbury, number 45, getting his second sack. Redshirt senior out of Louisiana. Comes from the backside, uses the speed to close in on Griffin. Just come and keep working, keep working as a defensive end. You never know what happens, and he kept moving that motor. He kept running that motor as he continued to run and pursue to get Griffin for his second sack tonight. Steers now have it fourth and like 20 from their 10. They're back in their. Punt formation, short punt oh, formation. Flag. flag is down, and but what an awful punt on the play. So we'll, we'll see what the call is, but uh, that was not a good. That, that was not a good punt under pressure as the officials get together at, at midfield. And either way, the one thing we do know is Texas Southern is going to have really good field position when this is uh, over with. Excellent field position by Offside, Texas. Offside, number 33, defense. Oh. Five-yard penalty, replay fourth down. We'll have to punt it again. So uh, we, we have one happy punter in the house because uh, <laughs> I'm sure he was not pleased with that one. Was actually the quarterback Griffin, as you can see, the offsides come right there across the line of scrimmage from the top side. Like you said earlier, Butch, bad punt there by Griffin as he tried to do the pooch kick. I'm looking at about a fourth and 15 now after the penalty, so he'll have a little more room to punt. Is that Cortez Griffin again? And he gets a better kickoff. This time it's number 84 trying, takes a look, but then decides better. He lets it hit, and the Tigers will start first and 10 from that point. Well, they went with Jay Kristoff as the quarterback in the first series at the halftime, and they used Denson as a one-two punch, a Louisiana connection. Let's see if Coach Asbury continued to run that and go that route, Butch, here in the second series. Yes, he is, and I, I tell you what, it's got a lot of great experience, as we said, but uh, let me ask you a question, Lima. What's Who that? holds the TSU record for career sacks with 41.5? Don't answer it right now. I'm going to okay. let you think about that for a little bit. You probably already looked at the answer, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> now, I kind of knew that already. Well, that's, that's a good question. We will be back with the answer in a little bit. First and 10 for the Tigers. The handoff goes to Denson, and he is stacked up. 
may have lost a yard on the play. So one thing you have to say about this Texas College team, these guys have never stopped fighting. I mean, they've been fighting from jump here in this game, and they, they're still out there. They're not rolling over despite being down 35-8. to eight. Well, when I talked to the offensive coordinator before the game, he said they wanted to be aggressive from the point of, from the start of the game, and they want to continue to fight throughout the game, and that's exactly what they want to do. Even though they're going against a, a tough opponent in the Texas Southern Tigers, they're still fighting here tonight at BBVA. Kristoff from the gun fires a strike and he has a man and he is pulled down. That looks like it's Larry Clark again with the catch. No, it's number 16, who's Stephen Carpenter. So Carpenter gets into the mix. Kristoff to Carpenter, and that's the first down for the Tigers. And what Coach Asbury is doing with Kristoff is going with quick routes to the inside. You want to make sure that your receiver has good leverage to the inside of the defensive back which allowed Kristoff to be able to hit him in stride and pick up the first down. First down and 10 Tigers in Texas college territory. Jay Kristoff is the quarterback and he's seeing his first action here in the second half. Back to pass, there goes a flag. Kristoff rolling, looking deep, has a man oh. and he overthrows him. He was open for the touchdown. That's Larry Clark, who was wide open, but the flag came down in the backfield, so I think it's going to be holding. Holding, number 70, offense. 10-yard penalty, replay first down. As Kristoff decide to roll to the right-hand side, you can see the holding in the backfield, but it had a chance to hit Clark the second down the scene, you just see him decide late there. And once you start moving around as a mobile quarterback, it hurts your offensive lineman when they try to continue to hold on that block and most likely it'd be called for a holding call. He's showing off his mobility though. I mean, he, he can really move around that mm -hmm. line and, and, and buy some time. And, and that's what he's done here in the second half. Now you have a Tigers looking at a first and 20 as Kristoff back in at quarterback. Fakes the pass and hands it off. It goes to number 26. We've seen him before. Patipa with a nice run. That's Jimmy Patipa carrying inside for the Tigers. He makes a nice gain. He, of course, he comes over from Ole Miss. He's a transfer. And he's getting the chance to see some action tonight. And you see Jay Kristoff is trying to find a way to get his guys motivated. Coach talked about, Asbury talked about tempo and keeping that tempo up. Let's we'll see what Kristoff can do here in this with this series second and long he's working out of the gun again back to pass in the pocket steps up gonna run with it Kristoff down the sideline showing off that speed cutting it oh. back inside and he is gone for the touchdown should be 52 yards on the touchdown run by Jay Kristoff excellent job there by Kristoff I said they want to keep the tempo high and continue to move the ball. He did that with his legs, getting in the end zone. We were just talking about his mobility, yeah. and here he is showing us exactly how mobile he is. And the thing I like about him, Butch, is the fact that he's patient. It's not like he's looking to run first and pass second. He's always looking to pass the ball, but right there he's decided to take it down and say, you know what, Butch, I want to get in the end zone as well and get some more points on the board for this Texas Southern Tigers team. Eric Medina is on for the extra point for the Tigers. And he drilled another one. TSU Tigers. All Tigers all the time, no matter what quarterback they put in, they have a lot of success. Right now, it's 42 to eight. Texas Southern leading Texas College. When we send an IBW electrician to your job site, I expect my electrical worker to be neat. Uh, I expect him to be professional. I expect him to be on time. I expect him to be productive. I expect him to do everything in his power or her power to ensure that employer is successful. Uh, because what's going to get us more work is, is successful jobs. The time is now to hire IBW electricians.
Percy Cruzo. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchie's. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. We are back at BBVA Compass Stadium where the TSU Tigers are putting on quite a show tonight, 42 to 8 over Texas College. So they really, I mean, what can you say that TSU has done wrong tonight? Nothing offensively. They, any quarterback they put in that position is able to have some success tonight. Jay Kristoff, we talked about his ability to, to scramble and to get outside of the pocket. He did an excellent job in that last series getting away from the defenders and into the end zone. You know, and the Tigers come into this game on that short turnaround. Their last game was on Sunday. Yeah. So they could only practice twice this week, and one day had to be a walkthrough. So uh, uh, this, this is pretty impressive getting this team ready to rock and roll. Medina on the kickoff. This time he bounces it in there, and no one picks it up. It goes back into the end zone, and it's going to be another touchback. He's done a fine job kicking. I mean, I can't find anybody who hasn't done a great job tonight. Christoph on, and he has really done a good job connecting with Larry Clark tonight. They've had a really good rhythm together. Yeah, five plays for 58 yards, Bush. That's outstanding. Christoph is able to extend plays like here. You see, it's an incomplete pass, but this next play, where he hands off to his running back and able to kind of keep a balance for the Texas Southern Tigers. But I like this play here, where he just takes off as a man and just gets to the outside and watch this cutback there, which helps him separate him from the defenders to get into the end zone, making it now 42 to eight. Texas College with the football right here with 6.56 oh, to go and the ball is loose. And he got back on it though. Well, a, a long night keeps getting a little <laughs> bit longer. That's Griffin making the recovery right there. Just a bad snap there by the center. Griffin was able to get back on it and try to recover it for his offense because it seems like they're just starting to fall apart at the seams here in the second half. They look like totally two different teams from the first half and the second half. They got to find a way to kind of fight through it. Even though they're down 42 to 8, Bush, they still have to find some pride and fight through it and keep keep fighting throughout this game. Well, I, I thought you mentioned the key early on that they may not have the depth to, uh, to match up, to up with this team for four quarters, and maybe that's what we're seeing now. Back to pass is Griffin. He scrambles out of the pocket, goes up the middle, keeps, slides down, and he picks up a nice gain for the steers. And, and that's what we've seen from mm -hmm. him all night long. Yeah, he, he could beat you with his legs. I mean, any opportunity for him to get away from the defenders, he's done that. But he's been working his tail off. I mean, he's been cramping up, and he's been on the sideline. But he just takes off here, trying to make something out of nothing. Be able to get some positive yards for his offense. But it really doesn't matter who the Tigers have in the game because whoever's on that front line, yeah. they're putting pressure on the quarterback, and this young man's having to scramble around for his life. Mm -hmm. Third down coming up now for Texas College. They're operating from about the 21, 22-yard line. Griffin back to pass again. Has a man one-on-one -on -one down the sideline, and it is overthrown right there. So he had a shot, took it down the sideline and it's an incomplete pass. Trying to go to sophomore receiver Terrence Carr and the man-to-man -man coverage. Excellent job there by Texas Southern defensive back. Number 21 looks like it's Johnson, sophomore out of Memphis, Tennessee. Able to stay with the receiver. Ball's now getting kicked right back to Texas Southern. We're going to get a chance to see Dejan Druid here. Maybe if he gets a chance to return this punt. He's a freshman from Houston, Texas. So uh, let's see if he can get his hands on this one and, and, and see what he can do with it. Steers back to punt it away, and it's a high, short punt. Druid makes the catch, and he is tattooed right <laughs> after he makes the catch. But how fearless was that young man? Oh, he wants to make a play. He's a young man getting the opportunity to get some game reps here. A freshman out of Lamar High School in Houston, Texas. Just show some toughness there. Didn't call for a fair catch, but he took a big shot there by Terrence Carr from Texas College. Took a big shot, but he held on to the football. So that is where the Tigers will start first and 10 with 524 to go in the third quarter. 
Kristoff still in at quarterback. He hands it off inside. It's number 88, LeChristopher Lee. He tries to get around the outside. Couldn't quite do it, and there's a fat flag down on the play. So let's see what the call is going to be. Might and, be holding. Well, and you're going to get these penalties. You know, when you're mixing so many players in and out of the ball game, I mean, you're going to have some penalties. Holding, number 27, offense. 10-yard penalty, replay first down. So that'll back up the Tigers a little bit. Anytime you have one of those stretch plays where you have a receiver come from the opposite side, it's a possibility that you will get most likely called for holding. Guys have to be blocking in zones and trying to keep their, their blocks. And with the momentum going in an opposite direction, it's very hard for a receiver or any type of back to keep their blocks and hold it before the guy gets past it. That's going to bring up a first and long for the Tigers. Kristoff back to pass, has his man curling back. That's Malik Cross. He hauls it in and uh, just picks up a short gain on the play. Malik Cross has been very active throughout the game, especially in the first half. This is his first reception in the second half. Just a simple slant route, a bubble screen out to the right-hand side to Malik Cross. Try to get him out in some space. Very athletic kid out of Fort Washington, Maryland. You want to get him out in some space and make a move. A good job by Texas College, Texas College defense to swarm in and bring him down. Tigers working out of the shotgun. Kristoff back to pass. Looking around. Still looking. Has all day. He better look out, though. He decides to keep. Runs. Cuts it back in. And that's a nice game. You know, his decision making is outstanding. For him to be a sophomore quarterback, but... For him to understand, to have the poise and, the, and, and have the present in the pocket to know when to take it down and run, that's been outstanding here in the second half for, for Kristoff. Let me ask you a question, Lemon. Tigers are playing Central State, Ohio next week. You know where they're playing that game? In the Bahamas? Nassau in the Bahamas. <laughs> you're getting set. I know, I know yeah. you're getting set. Yeah, that's a, that's a great trip right there. <laughs> Talk about hot. It's going to be real hot down there. Third down and seven. Kristoff looking to pass. Has a man, fires it, and he has his receiver. That's number 88, La Christopher Lee. He hauls it in, and I think he got the first down, didn't he? Yes, he definitely got the first down. You see here, this Kristoff is just continuing to progress as a quarterback, being patient for his receiver to come down. Excellent job. I keep moving your feet, keep fighting. First down, Texas Southern Tigers. Handoff inside this time it goes to number 26. That's Jimmy Patipa. He's played a nice game tonight. I mean, we've had a lot of backs get to carry the ball. Patipa right there on the carry. Cuts it back inside and then gets the tough yardage. He's a good change of pace running back. He comes in with a shoulder square, low to the ground. Good leverage. Able to change it up for Texas Southern. Hand off again, and I think it's Jimmy Patipa again as he picks up. He tries the right side this time and bangs in for three or four more. And again, Texas Southern want to control this clock. They want to make sure that clock continues to tick down with this large lead, 42 to 8. They want to not want to leave this game with any more injuries that they came into uh, tonight, Butch, and they want to find a way to kind of get continue to let these young players shine here in the second half. And I think that's a good point. And I, I think they were very conscious of that coming into this game. I think Coach Asbury had made up his mind. He was going to play a lot of players. He was going to get to see a lot of different guys. Uh, he knew it was a game they probably should win. And, and so far, everything has worked out just according to plan. Kristoff, back to pass. Lobs it deep. Has a man in the corner. And he makes the grab. Looks like, let's see who was that over there. It's uh, number. Looks like 16. Kind of hard to see with the dark jerseys. It's like one six. Stephen Chris Carpenter. Let's take another look at it. Christoph, was it 16? Yes. Yeah. Stephen Carpenter hauled in the catch. Nice play.
Tigers knocking at the door again. This time we're going to see Medina comes on fourth down fourth and short. Medina's going to try a field goal. Looks like a 42 yard attempt. He hits it. It's up. It's and good. it is good. Oh, no, 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 no good. It took these guys all day yeah. to come up and make a call. But <laughs> thank you guys. It is no good on the kick. So Medina, who's done almost everything right tonight, finally missed a 42 yard field goal. I think the officials were looking at each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One guy, okay, what, what, is it good or is it not good? <laughs> He's waiting for the other guy, and then finally he goes, no. He went to say yes, and then he says no. So Texas College will get the football. They will start first and 10 at about the 26-yard line. <laughs> Griffin still in at quarterback. Passes over the middle right there to number one, Philip Collier, and he picks up the first down, I think. So Collier. they're still working with their starters, it looks like. Yeah, they, they're working with their starters. I would say Collier is his number one receiver. Philip Collier coming across the middle of the slant route. He's a speedy guy, real speedy guy. That's thinking if you give him the ball early, he can be a, make athletic moves. And right there, he was able to come across the middle in that zone press by the Texas Southern Tigers defense. Philip Collier is a guy that they, they thought they might have been able to get the ball to a little more tonight, and it, it just didn't happen in the first half. Uh, Texas College coming up now with the first down. First and 10 from about the 38-yard line. Griffin back to pass again, has a man wide open near the sideline, and he makes the catch before he's pushed out of bounds by a host of tacklers. That's Bradford Lewis on the catch. Nice catch over there. So that's a nice gain for uh, the Steers. And you can learn. I mean, the Steers, I mean, you think about Texas College and what they can learn from this game, Butch. And it's some positive in this loss. I mean, right now with the score 42 to 8, it's some positive they can walk away with this from having a chance to, to continue to move the ball and throw the ball effectively, especially from uh, quarterback Greer. Uh, Griffin is able to learn from this, this loss tonight and, you know, try to find a way to continue to move forward. I mean, it's a smaller school, so you know they're going to learn from this and build off of it. Second down and about five. Griffin back to pass, and he throws oh. it into a crowd, and it is incomplete. Several Tigers right there for the play. Dondre Dobbins was near the ball. He's had a good night tonight. Mm -hmm. He's done really well. So as Zacchaeus Bambi Joko. He was the leading tackler at halftime, and he was starting for Claiborne tonight, so he's had a, he's had a nice game. Number 21, Demetrius Johnson, also in on that play. Third down. Steers working out of the gun again. Look at the pistol, and Griffin is under pressure, scrambles out of the pocket, cranks it deep, has a man, and it is incomplete. Flag is down. There goes the flag. And number 23, Mitchell Holmes is saying, who, me? <laughs> <laughs> really? Mitchell Holmes on the coverage. Holmes, a redshirt senior out of Jones High School here in Houston, Texas. There is no foul for pass interference. Fourth down. So guess what? Mitchell was right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Michael Holmes. I called him Mitchell. It's Michael Holmes. Hey, you can see Griffin scrambling around. It's good coverage there by Holmes. Michael Holmes, good job by the officials. Pick up that flag, too. Timeout. Looks like Texas College is calling a timeout. 12 seconds to go in the quarter, and they're looking at fourth and four. I'm sure they're trying to come up with a play. Um, like you said, there's a lot of positives even Texas College could take out of this, but uh, I'm sure Darryl Asbury is really, really, he's going to have a lot to look at on the film and, and, and to prepare himself for next week. A lot of good film tonight, good or bad, but he has a lot of chance to, he has a chance now to evaluate multiple players, guys that he would never see play as much in the game. He has a chance now to say, well, this player here that I didn't know about 
prior to this game can help us go forward <laughs> when they go down to the Bahamas uh, against Central State. Even when you're playing a team you're supposed to beat, you still have to come out and execute. Yeah. You know, there's a tendency to let up a little bit, and I don't think we saw that tonight from the Tigers. No, not at all. I thought Smalls did a great job by controlling the offense and moving the ball down the field. And what can we say about the uh, Devin um, Porter? Porter was able to be the key guy early on in the first quarter. He set the tone with the touchdowns, and the offense just followed his lead. He does. He's one of those guys on, on, on this team that leads by example. Fourth down coming up here for the Steers. Give it inside, and let's take a look and see. He's going to be close. Corey Sherman bangs inside, and uh, it was fourth down. Steers think they have the first down, and so do the officials. First down on the play. Excellent play call there after the timeout, going with the bruiser back, and Sherman pushed forward and fought his way to get the first down. And that takes us to the end of the third quarter. So after three, three quarters in the books, the TSU Tigers up 42 to eight over Texas College. Hello, I'm Alan Helfman, Vice President of River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge. This is my friend and customer, Miss Georgia Provost. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Chrysler 300. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee. Ellen is the only car dealer I will ever buy a car from. Come see us at Kirby in the Southwest Freeway. does is yell. They can't hear you, Ramsey. But every time he's come over this year, we've won. And he always brings Bud Light. Little dog won't come out from under the couch. But we're winning. I love you, Ramsey. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. We are ready to start the fourth quarter between Texas Southern and Texas College. Texas Southern up 42 to eight, but the Steers are on the move. They have the football as we start the fourth quarter of play. Griffin back at quarterback, working out of the gun, back to pass, looking around, has a man, and it's dropped. Incomplete, he tried to hit number seven, Tyrone Bibby. He couldn't quite hang on to it. First reception, I mean, first pass thrown to Bibby tonight, in my opinion, and that's it seems like he, those plays you have to have, especially on the road. You're down 42-8. Uh, to eight. And one thing I saw right after uh, the end of the third quarter, the head coach for Texas College brought all his players together on the sideline, trying to motivate them and trying to let them know that we've got to continue to fight for 15 more minutes. Second down coming up now. Second, second and 10. Griffin back to pass again, has a little time, has a man open, oh. and he hits him. It's number 18, Bradford Lewis, and Lewis takes it all the way for the touchdown. So you just mentioned they had to keep hitting it in there, keep hitting it in there, and not quit, and there's your result. Yeah, you want to kind of keep the momentum going and kind of keep fighting. I said the head coach for Texas College brought his guys in and let them know that we have 15 more minutes of football to play, and that was an outstanding job there by the receiver to break away and get the touchdown. Bradford Lewis. Bradford Lewis for the Steers, operating out of the gun. Griffin on the slant, the quick slant, and he does the rest. Speedy guy, too. Speedy guy. Get, give him the ball and just get out the way. Looks like Texas College is going to go for two. There's the snap from the gun. The fade pass into the corner is incomplete. This is going to be 42 to 14. Looking for Philip Collier, but he's way overthrown. Tigers are looking good as good can be right now. 42 to 14. 
as we take a time out. Define the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many, sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, we must learn to work together. And welcome back, everyone. The TSU Tigers getting set to return the kickoff from Texas College. Of course, the Steers just scored a touchdown to make it 42 to 14 as the Tigers get set to uh, bring back the kickoff. This is an impressive drive there by Texas College. I thought Griffin did an excellent job by moving the offense, but you got to keep fighting. Fight, fight, fight until the last whistle is blown, and Texas College showing that they're still here to fight in BBVA Conference Stadium. Here come the Tigers on the return. A big return right there by Le Christopher Lee. He had a little, a little wedge there, and he almost got through it. Uh, a nice return, and I think that's one of the most impressive things about the night. TSU has had good field position this entire ball game. Yeah, you see here seven plays, 74 yards by Texas College. It's a combination of running the ball and throwing the ball, and it just wore, it just wore down the Texas Southern Tigers defense right there with a big key play across the middle. No safety over the top and the man-to-man -man coverage. Touchdown, Texas College. Quick slant will burn you every time on that, but uh, Tigers, I don't think they're really worried about that one. First and 10 coming up for the Tigers here. They start now from their own 38-yard line. Kristoff still in at quarterback. He has a single back behind him, and he gives it to number 27, who breaks it out into the open. A fine run by Kendall Denson. You know, he saw the hole, and he hit that hole very quickly there. Yeah, Denson gets used the power, but he has some speed getting to the left-hand side, breaking it open for the first down. But it looks like it's a flag against Texas Southern. It's coming back. It's an excellent job by Denson to be patient, wait for his blocks to set up and get to the back side and, and bust it open. But, again, a, a flag a, last week, the Achilles heel for Texas Southern football was – uh, team was the penalties. We talked about that early in the first half, Butch, and it's starting to creep back up here in the second, well, late in the second half in the fourth quarter. And I think a lot of that has to do with, we mentioned it before, just so much, so many different personnel out there now, people who are not used to being out on the field in, in, in this type of situation, and and it, it's that's how you learn. You go through this and, and you learn a lot. Christoph, back to pass from the gun. He has a man and he hits him. Still on his feet is Malik Cross. He ducked underneath the defender and we have a flag down. It could be a personal foul for a face mask. Personal foul, face mask, number 38, defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Good call there, Butch. It looks like Texas Southern gets the yards right back at the, for the holding call. Watch Cross, that he's yeah. a junior from uh, Maryland. What Washington, Maryland, strong receiver, slot guy, able to break the tackle and take on the face mask.
put that penalty tacked on. The Tigers will have a first down and they will go from there. Ball's a little over midfield as they start right here, first and 10. Kristoff has it on blitz on the play. He ducks inside and keeps and might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. But he recognized that there was some heat coming from the outside, <laughs> so he did the right thing. He ducked and went right back inside. It looks like the heat was coming from number 44, Justin Crawford, the junior linebacker, bringing that pressure on Kristoff. We know Kristoff can get away from the pressure. He scored that touchdown on that. I mean, he had that rushing touchdown. He was able to get, get away from the defenders and get back to the line of scrimmage. Second down for the Tigers. Second and 10 as they operate from, as I said before, near midfield. Kristoff has done a fine job running this offense in the second half. He really has. This time on the option, a quick pitch to Denson, and he has nowhere to go for a while, but then he shakes and bakes. He gets free. Look at him. He's all the way into the secondary. He turned. He goes from nothing to something, and he did it in a hurry. And he's a shifty back, too, Butch. He's able to get away from a couple of defenders as one is down. You see in this replay here, option, speed option to the right. He stops and plants, cuts back to the middle, and uses the speed, gets right back to the right side, get away from the defenders to pick up the first down. Excellent job there by Denson. Of course, another one of the steers, and we don't know if it's cramps or what the situation is, and uh, we really can't see who it is, but it looks like he might be dealing with a cramp. It is an extremely hot night, folks. We can't tell you how hot it is, and I said it once, they don't call this place the oven for nothing. It, it gets really <laughs> hot down on that field. Yeah, it was actually very hot on the field early today when I was down there talking to the coaches. I had to come up here and just cool off. Let's take another look and see exactly what happened on that play, if we can. You just see Denson cuts back to the inside as Justin Crawford, number 44, reaches out. Looks like he's grabbing his left knee as he plants to reach out for Denson as he cuts back. Maybe he tweaked that left knee a little bit. And you, you hate to see that in this game, late in the game. It's a 42-14 game, and it, it's part of football, but let's, let's hope he's okay because no one wants to see any injuries you know, at all at this point. We're going to take another look at it and see exactly what happened to uh, Crawford on the play. And he just got spun around. You can see his momentum is sliding left as his upper torso is coming back right. And that's not a normal position to be in for a defensive player. And it looks like his, he needs very, I mean, very much so hurt that left knee. Justin Crawford, the junior linebacker, is taken off the field. We hope he's okay. Tigers will start first and 10. Ball at about the 29-yard line. Kristoff still the quarterback. Has the football. Quick pass, and he has his man. It is complete to number 84. That's Dejan Druitt with the catch. Nice catch inside right there. So he's, he's made a living off of that little short pop yeah. tonight, and he's kept a lot of drives going that way. It keeps his, temp, uh, his momentum and the tempo going. He wants to kind of establish himself across the middle, which brings the defense in, and it helps him, when it, especially when he's extending the plays and running to the outside. Kristoff back to pass again, cranks one deep for the end zone, and he has a man for the touchdown. That's Larry Clark, the third. He's had a connection with this guy since the minute he came into the game, and boy, what a shot there. I mean, that was a good-looking pass. Yeah, Larry Clark the third is his favorite target in the second half. Kristoff goes to him. Man-to-man -man covers to the outside. Kristoff pump and go. Goes deep. Excellent job there by Clark the third. He can catch the ball high and fall in the end zone. Just a really good play. Yeah, you know, he got the coverage he wanted, and he, he took a shot, but he made an excellent throw. Good athletic play there by Clark the third. Of course, Clark hails from Baker, Louisiana. Went to Scotlandville High School. Coming in, making a big play. Medina for the extra point. That one is good. TSU Tigers. 49 to 14. How about them Tigers? How about them Tigers? An outstanding job to counter the touchdown that Texas College put up prior to that 
the series here by Texas College, Texas Southern University, for them to come back down with you know, Chris, Christoph and be able to move the ball. And got they got a few breaks there throughout the throughout that series with some flags, but they were able to find his favorite target and Clark the third to finish off that drive was excellent. I think you just made a good point because that's one of the reasons why uh, Texas Southern, I think, has done so well tonight because every time Texas College did anything positive, the Tigers came right back mm -hmm. immediately yeah. and capitalized. And, and that really, it just stopped them from getting any momentum after they were up 8-7. I mean, it's been all TSU after that. I tell you what, we may have a tough time picking out a, a player of the game. Yeah. All quarter, all the quarterbacks have been you know, Jamal Smalls, he's playing outstanding. He played outstanding. And you have Kristoff, he's playing good here in the second half. I have to give a, a team ball just overall to Texas Southern for a great outstanding win. Special teams play good tonight. Defense is playing outstanding, bringing pressure. So it might just be a good team ball. Davion Porter only carried seven times, but he got 81 yards, ran for two touchdowns, and caught one. So uh, you can't beat that. Philip Collier on the return now for the Texas College, and he is stacked up right at about the 20 on the kickoff return. That's another look at the touchdown. Well, actually, this is right before the touchdown. This is the drive, six plays, 62 yards. And the fact that Kristoff was able to get the ball to Denson, I thought he was a key factor in that last series, he was able to cut back and make guys miss. But most important, he has great leverage as a runner. That's one of the things tonight. Tigers have gotten a look at so many different backs. And then there you go right there to number 85, Larry Clark, to seal that drive. Texas College on the move now. From the gun, Griffin takes a look, and his pass is incomplete. He threw it way behind the receiver. It was intended for Charles Jackson. Timing just wasn't there yeah. on that play. Not not at all. Just not, way off. Timing was definitely off. In my opinion, I think they should continue to try to establish the run. That really helped them out with their back. Back there, able to push guys backwards, Texas Southern defense backwards, which helped them open up the passing game. Go to Sherman. Go to Sherman and run some clock, second down. Griffin to pass, has a man through his hands that was intended for Philip Collier. Incomplete pass. Huge third down now for Texas College. They established themselves twice in the last two plays by passing the ball. I mean, they put themselves in a tough position now because Texas Southern as a defense, if I was a defense coordinator for Texas Southern, I would come with a blitz package on this play to try to force the ball early out of Griffin's hands. Well, last time in this situation, they went to that slant pass and, mm -hmm. and they got a touchdown, but uh, let's see what happens this time. It's going to be third and about 10. Here come the blitz. Griffin in the pocket, under pressure, has to pitch it out. He throws the shuttle pass to Philip Collier. And Collier, let's see, the officials blew the whistle. Did he step out of bounds? I think that's what they're calling. They're calling that he stepped out of, out of bounds, but excellent job there by Griffin. Extending the play, went with the shovel pass to Collier, his speedy receiver, able to separate from the defender and pick up the first down. You see here, Griffin looks to the right, decides to, feels the pressure, goes with the shovel pass to Collier. As he gets close to the sideline right there, he steps out of bounds before he makes the cut back inside. That was very close. These guys, they, you know, they're still competing. It might be 49-14, but this this team is still out there trying to compete. And boy, what a, what a nice play there! He stepped out, barely stepped out, but that's going to be a first down either way. So the steers will start first and ten from that point, and there goes the whistle. Number three, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Penalty against Texas uh, College will back them up five yards. Didn't get that one off on time. Tigers looking good tonight, though. Mm -hmm. Coach a Asbury, you, I mean, you can't complain about this. And they came out against an inferior opponent, but mm -hmm. like I said, they did not take anything for granted, and they came out, and, and they really earned it. 
Griffin with a pass over in the flat. It is incomplete, looking for Collier again. That's over his head, and it's out of bounds. The most important part about that is when they got hit with some adversity from Texas College, they adjusted and they countered. You know, a lot of teams, that's when you know your team is heading in the right direction when they're able to take a blow and not just take the blow, able to adjust and counter that and deliver as well. I think Coach Asbury is going to sleep very well tonight. <laughs> Texas College looking at second down here. Griffin been in that pocket all the night, and he has to scramble down again. He comes up the middle, then he breaks it out right, and he slides down after picking up about seven yards. A nice, nice game right there for the young man who's actually played a very, uh, really good game tonight for Texas College. He's been Cortez Griffin. He's been very competitive tonight. He has a stop fighting throughout this game despite the score. I well, like had, had he not been so mobile, mm -hmm. Texas Southern would have like 20 sacks by now because yeah. they've been in his face for most of the night and he's done that. Yeah, just extending the plays, watching the secondary and knowing when to tuck the ball and run has been very helpful for Texas College offense. Third down, the give inside to number 27, Curry, Cody Sherman, Corey Sherman, and he is knocked down short of the first down. So they tried to slip it inside and use the quick hitter and, and it tried to come up with the first down, but uh, he's about five yards short, maybe six yards short on the play. Yeah, and then with the, you know, Texas College is known to, to do uh, surprising things on fourth down. If I was them, I, you know, the score the way it is and just go for it on fourth down here. Here come the steers, and the way they line up, it's, it's hard to tell when they're going to punt yeah. the ball and when they're not going to punt the ball. They've done that all night, and there he goes. He gets the punt away. It bounces, and it gets a pretty good hop right there, and it downs. it's down right at about the 16-yard line. It's been a, all Tigers tonight. They have done everything right. Tigers will have the ball when we come back, leading 49-14 to 14 over Texas College. I'm Percy Cruzo. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchie's. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. The environment is my passion. Every day I live for the outdoors and all of its challenges. That's why I enlisted in the Coast Guard. Now, I serve to protect the environment and defend my country. It's like I was born for this. Were you born ready for a greater challenge? Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. When we send an IBW electrician to your job site, I expect my electrical worker to be neat. Uh, I expect him to be professional. I expect him to be on time. Uh, I expect him to be productive. I expect him to do everything in his power or her power to ensure that employer is successful. Uh, because what's going to get us more work is, is successful jobs. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. And we are back, Texas Southern, with a 49-14 lead over Texas College. And, and something we didn't talk about, you know, you know, we should have mentioned this earlier, but last week when TSU came out and overcame all the penalties and knocked off Prairie View, a big win, athletic director Charles McClellan guaranteed a victory before that game, mm. you know, and his players did not disappoint the, vo the boss. They came through, made him look like a fortune teller. <laughs> Tigers starting first and 10. Kristoff still in at quarterback. It looks like it was number 40. That is Tyler Jasmine on the carry. And he is knocked down. Tyler's a freshman getting the handoff from Pearland, so he's getting, getting to get some work in this game. 
And what's another thing that we haven't really talked about, Butch, that I'm starting to notice here with Jasmine running the ball is that Coach Asbury is doing an excellent job by recruiting here locally in the city of Houston. A lot of local kids are staying home and having a chance to play in front of their family. We caught we call out a quite few of guys that, that stayed here from Jones High School and also Fairland High School. They have it second and about 11 now. Kristoff from the gun, another pass deep, and he has a man. A great catch. He reached back. That's number 16, Stephen Carpenter, coming away with a nice play. Athletic play there by Carpenter. As you see in this replay here, when it comes up, he's able to, in the man-to-man -man coverage, the quarterback hits him high, then he turns around, spins from the defender. Excellent job there by, the, by Carpenter. Just, just showing flexibility, able to turn around and make some an athletic play for the Texas But I, I like offense. what Kristoff is doing because he's putting that ball, he's giving his man a chance to make a play. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the Texans used to do with Andre Johnson. Yeah. You put that ball around him and you, you let him go up and, and make the play. So a big first down there. He's also pretty accurate tonight. Mm -hmm. The young man has been very impressive. First and 10 and the give. Goes to Jasmine again, and he cuts it inside for a short gain. Tyler Jasmine on the play. Now the 49 points scored tonight, the most scored during the Asbury era. So mm -hmm. the Tigers definitely coming on. Uh, I mean, that's 49 points. So, I mean, that's like he said, he's been all about building and improving 2-9, and 2-9. Nine, and, nine, and this year he hopes to do a lot better with scoring 49 points tonight, the most uh, during his era as the head coach, Daryl Asbury here at Texas Southern University. Tigers coming back out. Uh, no gain on that last run, so they're looking at second down and about uh, 10 yards to go. But this is a fun game if you're, if you're a TSU Tiger tonight mm -hmm. because, one, you're going to get to play. Two, if you're a starter, you get to stand on the sidelines and cheer for your teammate, but you get to also have fun. You know, I mean, there's a mm -hmm. lot of ribbing going on on the sideline. That pass complete to Tracy Johnson uh, for a short game. But, but that's what football is all about. And this is one of the fun things if you were on that side of the football. Yeah, you get a chance to pin your ears back and go after the player. And, and any guy on the, any team wants to have a chance to get out on the field and just show his ability and just have no worries. A lot of the young players are getting out there and just letting it fly and making plays for Texas Southern tonight. Well, you watch the guys on the bench and everybody's smiling and they're up there <laughs> and they're, they're joking around with some of the guys on the field. And like I said, that's, that's the fun part of football and, and they're getting to experience that tonight. Third down coming up, third and about 10. Crystal looking to pass, oh, has a man open. wide open. He makes the catch, makes a nice move. And LaChristopher Lee is down at about, looks like he's at about the 27, picking up the big first down, but again, that Kristoff is pretty accurate, isn't he? Yeah, Kristoff is accurate in the second half across the middle to Christopher Lee. Just able to get behind the secondary and find that sweet spot to get the first down for the Tigers. They have been knocking at the door for, for most of the night. I mean, I, I mean, I think they punted twice maybe, so that's – it's been a lot of offense in this game, and they've really done a good job of picking up first downs and, and continuing drives. And that's usually the key to winning is to keep the drive going, keep the drive going, get those third downs. Kristoff with a pass, and it was almost a touchdown right off the arms. Looks like it was number 88 again. Le Christopher Lee, and it was right off the hands. That was, that was pretty close. You can't put it in a better place right there as he's crossing the, the field. Kristoff puts it where his receiver can catch it. Ah. Would have been a tough catch, but that's he could have made that one. Oh, yeah. You know, the rule of thumb, anytime <laughs> you get your hands on it, you can make a catch. And he definitely had an opportunity to do that on that last play. A little bit. But, you, but you're right. He had a shot. He definitely had a shot. Tigers coming up with a second down play. Really, they're just kind of working on the clock a little bit, taking a look at some plays and some players. Jasmine on the carry, cuts it back in, and look at the guy showing off his power. Big play as he bangs it all the way down to the 13-yard line. Tyler Jasmine, we mentioned earlier, he's a 5'8 freshman from Pearland Dawson High School, and he's getting to show his, uh, show his stuff a little bit tonight. Man, just a hard-nosed run there by Jasmine. Get to the outside, he's bouncing, but watch it. Look at his vision right there, Butch, able to seek out the hole and be patient to get in there and, and, and just be tough against those Texas College defenders.
First and 10 again for the Tigers. Kristoff still working on the passing game. Fires one out to the right side, and it is caught right there by Tracy Johnson for a short game. They got him out of bounds. You got to stay in bounds, though. You got to continue to let this clock tick down if you're Texas Southern. You know what? Let me, uh, I almost forgot. We got our trivia question. That's right. And we talked about it. It was who had the most career sacks in Texas Southern history. And I know you wanted to guess. <laughs> it was 41.5. I'll give you a big hint to people out there. He just recently went in the Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. <laughs> who is it? That makes it very easy. That's Michael Strahan. Michael Strahan, the pride of TSU, into the Hall of Fame and leads in career sacks with 41.5. That is the answer to our trivia question for tonight. Tigers knocking at the door again. Nice carry there by Joshua Taylor. So everybody's kind of getting into the end. Mm -hmm. Letting that clock tick down. We have three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. With TSU knocking on the door again. Good team effort tonight by the Tigers. On the rollout, Kristoff rolling left, fires into the end wow. zone, and boy, he had him. Looked like it was Tracy Johnson again. He had it for a second, and then on the hit, he lost the ball. And uh, this is, you know, it's one of those nights where you wish you could put some of these points in a suitcase and carry them with you to the Bahamas <laughs> next week and, and have a good time because uh, you, you, don't, you don't have many nights like this where you get to put 49 on the board and play so many players and get everybody involved with what's going on in the field. Like I said before, it, it's fun. Tough play there by number 14, Tracy Johnson, trying to get that pass. Freshman out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Took some hits as well coming across that middle. Medina on to attempt the field goal, and it is up. And his kick is good. So the Tigers tacked on three more, so they just dropped a 50-burger on Texas College tonight. 52 to 14. TSU Tigers, Medina having a big night too. The kicker, Tigers lead it. We'll be back. It's the end of an era. All oh, the parties. The stories. I'm gonna miss your smell. You were my first. What? I knew it. I knew it's it. It's true. Oh man, I'm sorry I broke your leg. I wrote a song. <clears throat> sorry. Here we go. Keep the good times going with the crisp, refreshing taste of Bud Light. Here we go. Whoa. Check out this new couch. We are back at BVVA Compass Stadium, and, and we're still here, even though a lot of the fans have decided <laughs> it's time to go home, and they may be right. 2.38 to go in the fourth quarter, and the TSU Tigers have turned in a very impressive 52-14 to 14 effort to this point. They are leading at this point and getting ready to kick off back to uh, Texas College. A complete team effort tonight by Texas Southern offensively, defensively, and on special teams. You see that. Medina made up for that missed field goal early in the second half, but making the one right there before, uh, before making the score now 52 to 14. You know, he was good last week. He kicked a couple of field goals against Prairie View and uh, seems like he's picking up right where he left off. And here is his kickoff. 
And the steers get set to make the return. Feels it on the 10, cuts up the middle, and he is knocked down. That is Dara Smith, the sophomore running back, and he is cut down right there, just, just shy of the 25-yard line. Well, here we go. With two minutes and 27 seconds to go, scoring drive for Texas Southern was 11 plays and 75 yards with five minutes and 52 seconds in there. So here we go, Butch, what I was going to say, defensively for Texas Southern, can they finish up strong? I mean, offensively, move the ball, finish up with the field goal. Let's see how the defense hold up. 552, and they threw a lot of passing in that drive because that's just their offense, mm -hmm. and that's how they run the clock. It's yeah. that control passing that allows you to keep the clock moving if you complete the pass, and that's what they did. Texas College on the attack now, and the handoff goes down inside to for a short gain right there. For College on the uh, st steers on the attack. London Perkins, the running back on the carry. This is going to be a good game to build off of. Oh, no question. Going in, and they're going to a really nice place in the Bahamas. I mean, <laughs> you want to build off something, go into a, play, a really nice place for momentum, I'll choose Bahamas anytime. Second down for the Steers, and the run up the middle goes nowhere. It looks like it's Londell Perkins again. Nothing much inside, and that defense has been tough all night long. So mm -hmm. that, that, no surprising that even with the reserves in there, they'd still be doing some of the same things. And you're starting to see a lot of the Texas College uh, young players starting to get into the game now and try to get some reps as well. This game way out of, out of reach with less than two minutes. It's only right for Texas College to try to get some of these young players the opportunity to play in front of these bright lights. It's going to be third down. We've got about a minute to go. And, uh, you know, at some point here we're going to have to talk about the player of the game. Uh, I want you to be thinking about that. Okay. Third down and whistles blow, and that stopped the action right there. We'll see what the officials are talking about. It looks like it's a legal procedure. So that will back them up a little bit. Just an overall very, very impressive night for the Tigers. Yeah, just good, complete game. I mean, they came in into this game with the mindset knowing that, that they were going to dominate Texas College, and they did that from the beginning. Set the tone early with, with Porter and Jamal Smalls. I really thought he did an excellent job for his first career start here in front of their home crowd. You know, they played a lot of close games last year in that 2-9 and nine record. Well, to get your second win this early in the season, that's positive for the players, too, mm -hmm. because that means, you know, you got something to really build on. You've already won as many games as you won all of last year. Mm -hmm. So they, they're going to take it from there. They're going to go down to the Bahamas and try to be 3-0. They play Central State at that, so it's a chance to kind of go down to the Bahamas, enjoy yourself, and come back <laughs> with a victory. Coming back at the Houston, 3-0. We got a timeout on the field is what we're, wa we're waiting for as uh, the officials come back. They're going to spot the ball. It's going to be a third and 11 whenever we get back to play. Mm -hmm. um, as you said, you got young, young players on both sides, and uh, they want to finish this thing out right without anybody getting hurt. They really did cut back on the penalties tonight. Though. Oh, yeah. yeah, And, that, and that was a big thing. They had to. I they mean, had they really to. had to. I thought that was a big, huge plus for them. And I just like the way they just stayed mentally into this game. I thought throughout Prairie View game last week, I know it was a big rival, but I just felt like mentally they lost it at times. But tonight they played a complete game, not just physically, but mentally also. Third down, and that was a short run right there. Clock is ticking away. We're down to 21 seconds. 
And what a home opener. What a way to open at home when you put 52 points on the board. Mm, yeah, and you just dominate from, you know, just dominate from the beginning. You have to set the tone, and your home crowd is here. The band is playing. It's Thursday night football. Let's go out and get a great win. And Coach Asbury and his team is marching on the field for their second victory. And that does it. The zeros are up, and TSU comes in their home opener and comes away with a big victory, 52-14 to 14 over Texas College. So a big win for Darrell Asbury and the Tigers. They are now 2-0 and o on the young season. How about that, Lima? An outstanding job for their team to be able to fight through it. They have a total of two wins, which they made last year, and the fact that they have a lot more games to go throughout the season means they're going to have a bright future. This two season. wins that were completely different because you look at last week, they could have easily lost that game. They uh -huh. had so many penalties. They could have lost that game very easily, but it didn't happen. They didn't. And it's 52-14 Texas Southern over Texas College. Tonight we're going to take a quick break and come back with a lot more.